being here with us on today's show. Coming up, we're going to catch up with Stranger Things star Brett Gelman, all about the twists and turns in the hit show's latest season. We're also going to highlight in the third hour, we had a great chat with one of our favorite writers, David Sedaris. So we'll tell you what David had to say. And finally, we're going to remember the beloved actor Ray Liotta with a clip from our vault. But first, here are today's pop star headlines. First up, though, on pop star today, let's talk about Norm Macdonald, because Netflix released the late comedian's final stand-up speech. Yesterday, it's titled Norm Macdonald, Nothing Special. The nearly hour-long set was actually recorded by Norm in his home and without an audience. The streaming service revealing that Norm chose to tape the show in the summer of 2020. It was just before he was to undergo a procedure because he didn't want to leave anything on the table in case things went south, as he said. And Nick Macdonald, who kept his cancer diagnosis private for nearly a decade before his passing last September, didn't shy away from making jokes about life and death in the special. I don't want to get my hair colored no more, you know? I don't want anybody painting my hair black. On account, I don't want to die and then uh, be surprised. You know what I mean? Go, damn, I look good. And then God goes, well, I made your hair white. I, what do you think that was all about? I was telling you, to get your affairs in order for God's sake. The following Norm set, the special includes conversations with some of his closest friends and colleagues, including David Letterman, Conan O'Brien, Adam Sandler, and Molly Shannon. Again, it's called Nothing Special, and it is streaming now. And again, that's on Netflix. Next up, this is crazy. Bradley Cooper. Have you seen this? Yeah. yeah. Unrecognizable yeah. in his next big movie role. Check this out. What? That's Bradley Cooper yeah. from The Star is Born. Yes, playing legendary composer Leonard Bernstein. Cooper stepping into the role for an upcoming biopic that's called Maestro. It's heading to Netflix as well. Yesterday, they put out a bunch of photos from the set, and Cooper can be seen alongside what? his co-star, Carrie Mulligan, who plays Bernstein's oh. wife in the film. And Bradley's not just starring on the big screen. He's also directing the whole thing. Huh. Leonard Bernstein, of course, is the well-known uh, composing. Um, he did West Side Story and yep. On the Town. Yep. My show is expected to be released sometime next year, but that is unbelievable. Wow. Makeup nailed it. Reminds me of Colin. Uh, Colin Firth? Farrell. Uh, Farrell. Farrell. In, Colin uh, Farrell Batman. Batman. Crazy. And Penguin. Next up, Bob Dylan, a piece of music history from the legendary singer songwriter is up for sale. Autograph and historical documents dealer Moments in Time is selling the original handwritten manuscript wow. for Dylan's 65 song, wow. Like a Rolling Stone. So, what's the price, you ask? Well, the low, low wow. bargain of $1.3 million wow. for those two worn pages featuring Dylan's lyrics Amazing. and margin notes. If that's a little too much for you, Moments in Time also offering this one. It's Dylan's complete signed lyrics to Blowing in the Wind. Uh -huh. huh. That one was written on the St. Regis Hotel stationery and it's listed for a much better $150,000. Oh. At least it's not an NFT. Yeah. You don't get anything. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so where is the answer, my friend? I don't know. It's Blowing in the Wind. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, the answer, answer is Blowing in the Wind. That's a free one for you. <laughs> Next up, Dwayne Johnson. It seems like the rock is everywhere these days. He's on the set of Black Adam. He's working on his energy drink company. He's at home with the family. And now he's at prom. Or is he? One high schooler brought the actor to prom as a cardboard cutout. Oh, gosh. Mel and Dwayne uh, wore matching pink formal attire, as you see. The two posing for photos of friends. When The Rock saw this went viral on social media, he reshared the hilarious pictures and wrote, it was absolutely my honor and you the best prom date ever. <laughs> Have the best right. summer. That's great. And now we just want to know who beat The Rock for Prom King. <laughs> uh, finally, even more Top Gun. There you go. What would the record-breaking franchise be without a killer soundtrack? Well, in a recent interview with Vulture, Kenny Loggins opened up about the song that landed him a gig on the original film. And I'm not talking about Danger Zone. Huh? Maybe you recall this sweaty scene. <laughs> You remember that scene? They no? nailed all these beats. Like they, they, there's a, there's a moment in the new Maverick that's light that that harkens yeah. sort of back like this. to this. It's Except there's even on the beat. There's even yeah. more. It's so good. More. Even more beefcake. More beefcake. Yeah. Uh, so awesome. originally, Loggins wasn't even in the top five contenders to sing the anthem, which was Danger Zone. But after he and co-writer Peter Wolf came up with the playing with the boys score that was in that beach volleyball scene, Kenny then got the job for Danger Zone, and the rest is wow. Wow. Say his wow. And here's some, just a couple more headlines for you. It is Popstar Plus after all. First up, we'll start with Andy Cohen. The dad of two is sharing a peek into his long holiday weekend. Yesterday, Andy posted this photo of one-month-old daughter Lucy to Instagram, the proud papa writing in the caption, good morning from little Lucy. That's a precious face there. It caused, obviously, as you can imagine, a flood of comments online from a lot of Andy's famous friends. 
jumping in to praise the youngest member of the Cohen clan. Nothing like an adorable baby pick to brighten up your post-Memorial Day weekend. Um, all right, finally, one more for you. Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion, the two are teaming up for the latest episode of Cardi Tries on Facebook Watch. The famous rapper is suited up with real athletes from the LA Chargers to learn all about the game of football. During the drill, some skills easier to the duo than others. Let me tell you something, right? When I used to be in high school, I used to go to a lot of hooky parties, and the cops used to bust the hooky parties a lot, so I had to run a lot. Okay. So, so I don't know, let me see if I can hear. I just gotta okay. see it. The cops are behind me. The cops. The cops are going, that is fine. <laughs> you ready? All right. I'm counting down from three. One. You in your stance? Are you good? You gonna stand straight Hello. up? Okay. I'm counting down. Three, two, one, go. Go, 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 go. go. <laughs> oh, I love the lightning effects there. Oh, and the overhead shot's good too. All right, so maybe that wasn't the fastest 40 yard dash time that the Chargers practice stadium has ever seen, but Cardi did a very respectable 7.8 seconds on that one. Looks like a fun show. It's called Cardi Tries, in this case, football, and that is streaming now. Those are your Pop Start Plus headlines. Still coming up, Brett Gelman opens up about working with Winona Ryder and the young stars of Stranger Things. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know the latest episodes of Stranger Things dropped over the weekend. Brett Gelman returns as Murray Bauman in volume one of the show's fourth season, and he talked to us about working with the cast. I think Murray has very much evolved this season. He found his people more. He's a less, slightly less isolated, slightly less uh, jaded person than he was in season three because he sort of learned what it meant to have friends. So you see that development a little bit, but he's still, you know, he's still a bit of a, a grouch and a, a grump. Yeah, a misanthrope, as they say. We love a good critic who calls things out how they are, you know, calls it like it is. So, and I, I think that that's very much a lot of what Murray's role is in this show. It's time. It is the darkest season. And I mean, it, the approach to Murray, I mean, you know, as I as I play him, you know, I get to know him more and more. So it goes deeper and deeper. But I mean, things are always bad. My favorite part about playing Murray is that I get to be sort of the like urban character <laughs> amongst all these rural characters, and then he sort of brings like uh, a city vibe to it. Yet the Moja Delisi. Hi, Jim. That I get to be one of the, you know, a character of like somewhat comedic relief in this 
action, thriller, horror series, which is a kind of character that I grew up wanting to play, you know? And just, uh, I mean, getting to be in these like amazing action sequences and the intensity of it, you know, while still getting to really like delve into who he really is and, and the humor of it is just uh, the best, you know? I mean, getting to be in the Duffer Brothers world that they created as this character. What? Do me a favor and move your lover's quarrel elsewhere, okay? Oh, no, 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 this, no, no, no. not a lover's quarrel, pal. Spare me! What is your problem? Please, stop talking! No! I can't tell you much about what Murray and Joyce are up to in it, um, but uh, working with Winona is like, you know, it's a childhood dream. Uh, she's one of the greatest actresses and movie stars of all time. And uh, it, I, it's, it's amazing to me that I can call Winona Ryder a friend of mine. You know, that's just, uh, it's one of those just bizarre things of like pinching myself that this is my life. And she, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun when we work together. She is like one of the kindest people and so funny. And so getting to be you know, working with her uh, on this, like almost every day that I, I worked on the show was, uh, was just like an amazing treat. Scoops Troop, this is, hmm, Bald Eagle. I've reached another junction. This is what? The fourth junction. All right, so if memory serves, this is right after the My Little Pony thesis. We went left, so he has to go right. right. Fly right, Bald Eagle. Fly right. Roger that, fly right. Little sh Seeing the teens' growth uh, has been amazing. I mean, they're really, like, just a great bunch of people really just so incredibly talented and nice and professional and fun to be around. So to see that uh, they haven't become like disaster people, <laughs> it's nice to see that that has not happened and that they've all stayed grounded. It's amazing. I'm really grateful that the Duffer brothers uh, wrote, <laughs> wrote me more stuff in the show and that they, that they made Murray's characters you know, Murray's involvement in the show grow. And it's just, it's been, it's insane. It's, it, you forget it because when you're working on the show, it just feels like family, you know, that we're just all, you know, cast and crew. It's like, we're here to do a job and get it done and have a good time together. When you step away and you are reminded just how massive the show is. I am the most excited for people to see me, uh, you know, just do amazing acting in this season. <laughs> It's just, it's really remarkable, and I think that uh, people will really, really enjoy my performance in a way that they haven't ever before. Uh, so that's very exciting to me. I'm, no, I'm, I'm really excited to, I, I just really, this season, I think it's the best season, and I think the other three seasons have been amazing, but I think the, it, it, this is everything, like, the up to the millionth degree. It is scarier, more action-packed, and funnier than, than previous seasons. And there is such an amazing balance of all of that, that, uh, I mean, it's just like, it's really, it's really awesome. A big thanks to Brett for hanging out with us. As a reminder, season four, volume one of Stranger Things is now streaming on Netflix. Coming up next, Beloved humorist David Sedaris's visit on the third hour of today. You're not going to want to miss it. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. 
At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Beloved memoirist David Sedaris has a new collection of personal essays out today. He spoke to the third hour all about pulling them together. Okay, full disclosure, I am a huge fan of He really is. The multi-talented David Sedaris is a comedian, radio host, best-selling author, penned his first book, Barrel Fever, almost three decades ago. Well, now David is back, and he's back with his 13th project. It's a collection of essays called Happy Go Lucky. After the pandemic brought the world to a halt, David documents how he settled into his new reality, and he is here this morning to tell us all about it. Mr. Roker has been talking about this for, for the past week. 13 books, that's almost as many as Al, how, how is how is this one different from the others? You know, I didn't I didn't mean for that to happen. I mean, I really <laughs> didn't. I mean, I look at a, I don't have all of my books, yeah. but I think it would be qu no quite a pile to it's to awesome. see them all. But I yeah didn't. I guess the change is that I, you know, I just as you get older, I don't know. I think the writing's better. Mm -hmm. I think that's it, and I just write about my life and. You know, as you get older, you fall apart and everyone dies on you. Oh. That's part of what happens. Yeah, yeah. And Happy you're trying to write humor, humor, so you got to laugh yeah. about falling apart and people dying on you. Right. Okay. you got to laugh about it. Um, let's talk about the, the book, the first chapter. It opens up with the, the title of it is called Active Shooter. I mean, we're a week away from the most recent mass shooting. That connection here on the, the release of your book, I mean... How, how does that sit with you? Um, well, I wrote the essay about going with my older sister to a firing range. Mm -hmm. uh, neither mm -hmm. one of us. We're not a gun family. And she just we passed a billboard and she said, let's go shoot guns. And so we took a training course. And anyway, I just wasn't for me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you have like 15 minutes on the range. And after about three minutes, I was like, can I be done now? It just yeah. was not my thing. Um, and and shortly afterward, Sandy Hook happened. Mm -hmm. So it's the first essay in the book. And yeah, and this just happened in Texas. But, you know, the sad thing is five years from now, someone will get the book out of the library and it'll be timely. Yeah. Ten years from now, just somebody so will pick up the book because they're cleaning out somebody's house who died of cancer. <laughs> and They'll open the book and it'll be timely. Yeah. And it's just always going to be timely in the United States. You know, on another note, you gave a graduation speech um, at Oberlin College, and we just played just last week um, different clips of different graduation speeches. I always think they're just so inspiring, even if you're an adult. And one piece of advice you gave was to only pick one thing to be offended by. What do you mean by that? Well, I said, I, I was giving out, I, I tried to think beforehand, what wisdom do I possess? And, and it's not much at all. <laughs> one of my bits of wisdom was, when it comes to scented candles, you have to be very careful. Because you know what I mean? They're like two right. good kinds of scented candles, and the yeah. rest are just, they smell yeah, they like smell air like fresheners. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then good I advice thought, for the graduates. Pardon? That was good advice yeah. for the graduates. And then I said, choose one thing to be terribly, terribly offended and by. And why do you say that? So that you're not walking around cranky all the time? Yeah, like, so you, your you're thought? not juggling. I agree. I mean, how many things, like there are things in this world that get me angry. Right. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, the only thing that offends me mm -hmm is when people put sunglasses on animals. <laughs> I, just because I think it's so dumb. 
and everyone's supposed to act like it's not. That's where, I didn't and, know that's where you were going. It offends me. Yes. See, and that's the beauty of reading a David Sedaris book. Because you know, I, I've been on a plane, and you just start laughing out loud. Yeah. Think and, people, and people think you're... In fact, after your speech, there was a little incident that happened, ironically. Uh, another bit of advice was always have a joke in your back pocket. Good piece of advice. Yeah. You know, and here's one that's quick and easy to remember. And I delivered the joke. It involved uh, a cop and two priests in a car. Anyway, oh, this man okay. rushed the stage. What? At the end of my, he was uh, offended by the joke and he was calling me a name. And you know, at first you don't understand what's going on. You see a little ruckus and you, and then you think, oh, that angry, really angry person being held back by security. Wow. And it wasn't like someone had his hand, he was like, let me at him, really? like that, wow. over this joke, which to me, my only problem with that was they were handing out diplomas at that time. Uh, so it was no. the kid's time. Yeah. That was their time. And he should have waited until later. You know, to I wasn't you. going anywhere. Yeah. You know, I was on we stage. Want to, oh we want to hear the joke in the I commercial know. break. <laughs> David, thank you. Uh, the book is called Happy Go Lucky. That book is out today. And if you want a real treat, listen to the audio book. God, he is the best. That is David Sedaris. Thank you so much. Still coming up, we're going to remember Ray Liotta and his unforgettable performance in one of his greatest films, Goodfellas. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Who meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? Hey, Miss Lester. Hey, who's this? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Nearly a week now after his sudden passing, tribute still pouring in for legendary actor Ray Liotta. In his honor, we pulled a clip from today's vault, takes us back to 1990, as Ray explained why he wanted to star in the film that defined his career, Goodfellas. The new movie, Goodfellas, is based on the true story of Henry Hill, a half Irish, half Sicilian kid from Brooklyn who was adopted by the local mob. Almost from the day he was born, Hill aspired to be what he called a wise guy, a gangster, and his dream came true. Except it turned out that life in the mafia wasn't always a dream. Goodfellas stars Ray Liotta as Henry Hill. Ray, good morning. Good morning. Uh, you sought Marty Scorsese out for this role. Why? Well, I had read the book. I uh, didn't know they were going to make it into a movie. I heard they were going to and was fascinated by the book. And then to have Martin Scorsese directing it, you know, what actor wouldn't want it? And plus, the part is just so full and juicy. There's just so much. It spans 30 years. And just about every emotion you could think of, uh, Henry went through. So. I don't mean to imply that you're not a fine actor in your own right, but were you at all intimidated about working with Robert De Niro, Martin Scorsese? No, um, not intimidated, just more excited. You know, as an actor, you want to work with the best people that you can. So I was just really, really excited to uh, get an opportunity to see, to play games with them. Yeah. I know that for Marty, the movie had a lot of personal relevance. Did it for you? Uh, personal in the sense as an actor and achieving a certain standard. No, uh, I meant that Marty said he, when he grew up, he could, he could relate to all oh, of the guys in this thing. It didn't have any for No, you, huh? not at all. I grew up in New Jersey in a nice suburb, played athletics, and, and that was it, the furthest thing from my mind, or in, in my area were bad guys. Yeah. No concerns at all that this film reinforces some stereotypes of Italians that are rather unpleasant? Um, I think it would be if someone had made up this story 
and chose to uh, capitalize on, on like what you're saying, the Italian-American background and the fact that these guys are in the mafia. But this is a true story. I play someone who's also half Irish. The character De Niro plays is also half Irish. There's a, so there's different backgrounds there. Yeah. The film is, is um, it, there's some romance in it. It's partly comical. It's partly violent. How would you characterize it? Partly comical, partly violent, <laughs> partly, there's a little bit of everything. It is, it really spans 30 years. I think what Marty wanted to do with this is do it more in a documentary style and show all the different levels. There's uh, scenes where I'm in prison and I'm there with my kids. He wanted to get everything, everybody involved, the whole lifestyle, yeah. not, just the, not just the events. I think the clip we're, uh, we're going to show is the beginning of the end for you after you've gotten in the drug business and you're using your, um, your babysitter as your courier. Oh. We'll, we'll take a look. Hello? Hey, it's me. You ready? Yeah. Listen, tell Michael not to let the sauce stick. Keep stirring it. Henry says don't let the sauce stick. I'm stirring it. I, I, listen, you know what to do? Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, yeah me, Lois. This is important. Now make sure you leave the house when you make the call. You understand me? You hear me call from an outside line. I mean it. Jeez, you must think I'm dumb. What are you bugging me for? I know what to do. Hey, you little hick, just make sure you do it. I mean what... Give me such a pain. Hey! Just do it! Okay. Hmm. She was fast and rather intense, I read. Excuse me? I said I understand the shoot was rather was fast and rather intense. Yeah, you know, Marty, he's a very intense personality, and there was just such an energy... Uh, in this story to begin with and you know why sit around wasting time so yeah plus he had worked with people before the crew and and the actors so it, it made it a lot easier to be that quick. I'm guessing it wasn't shot sequentially no did that make it difficult for you um you really had to keep focus I mean which again it's 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 30 years it's through the 50s 60s and 70s there's all different kind of locations uh different hairstyles different clothes I had 80 costume changes um but no, that's what makes acting fun, keeping that focus and energy going. You heard from the real Henry Hill, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, he called me about a week ago. We, didn't, uh, we decided not to meet him before we started filming. Not but that I, you could have. I mean, no, exactly. he's in the Federal Witness Protection Program, Exactly. Right? He did make himself available for some people, but I figured it was best to stay away. But he called me, saw the movie, and he liked it. So that felt nice. You think it a little strange that he called you? A little. It was a little bizarre, and then I went and to meet him at a location that he wanted to meet at. You know, just to know that someone lived that kind of life and now has to live the rest of his life because of the life he lived, it's a little, it's different from where I came from. Yeah. Yeah. You are now described, Ray, as in the, in the trade as a, quote, quote, hot property. Hmm. You feel hot? No. No, I, it's been about four or five years now since... I started making films and I've been doing one a year, so it's not as if it's been overwhelming and it's all, cut. you know, it's, it's taking its time. But certainly you've got to be conscious of the idea that this film maybe could do for you what Taxi Driver did for De Niro, what Godfather did for Pacino. I'd, I'd like I'd that. For Hoffman, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, I definitely would like uh, bigger and better things because of it, but I'm not holding my breath. May not have to. <laughs> God, I miss him already. Ray Liotta was such a talent. We're thinking of Ray's family and friends and sending them love. That's going to do it for this edition of Popstar Plus. We'll see you again right here tomorrow. Thanks for watching.
I'm Shop Today Editorial Director Adriana Brock and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in Editor's Picks. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Dovu and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share our must-have summer travel items in Influencer Trends. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. This is Shop All Day Summer Travel. Hey everyone, I'm Adriana Brock and we are back today with a new episode of Shop All Day. I don't know about you guys, but I am so excited for summer travel. And whether you're driving across the country or on a short road trip, traveling to a tropical oasis, hitting the beach, you name it, we have all the products you need to make summer travel a total breeze. From a travel friendly and super chic visor to a pair of sunglasses that are trending on social media and under $20. And see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you. Okay, first up, travel essentials that are gonna make your life easier. Let's start with a flying must-have. Okay, so this is the perfect one for those chilly airplane rides. It's a two-in-one travel-sized pillow that unzips to reveal a cozy blanket that's 65 by 45 inches. It comes in six different colors and it's made with soft to the touch micro fleece fabric that is great for plane travel, road trips, or even camping. And you fold it back up and it doubles as a cozy pillow. Plus it has a convenient luggage sleeve and a backpack clip so you can take it on the go. All right, next, do not let a messy bag turn into a bottomless pit when you're digging around trying to find those essentials like your phone, a passport, or a wallet. That can be so stressful when you're on the go or in a rush to get out the door. This affordable purse organizer is gonna put an end to the endless digging. It has all the compartments, pockets, zippers, everything you need to keep everything in a designated spot so you'll never have to lose your keys or misplace your sunglasses ever again. The best part about this organizing insert too is that it's so lightweight, you can easily transfer it from your purse to your beach bag and you'll never leave home without those essentials. And speaking of the essentials, we all need a good wallet to keep those important valuables handy. This affordable wallet has everything you need to keep you organized while you're on the go. Eight card slots, an ID window, two compartments for cash and receipts, and a zip pocket. It also has a slot for your smartphone and it comes with a thin strap that can convert this wallet into a hands-free crossbody bag that you can take on the go. And when you're on the go, streamlining your beauty bag is a must and we thought you covered with a really smart solution. It's the Kitsch Ultimate Travel Essentials 11-piece set of containers that will let you bring travel-friendly sizes of all your favorite beauty products on the go without having to check in all those full-size bottles in a suitcase. These lightweight pouches are great for shampoo and conditioner. There's also a pump bottle that you can use, a spray bottle, and little jars for your skincare routine. Plus, it comes with a really convenient funnel and a spatula, so it's gonna make transferring all the products into the containers totally seamless. And once you have all your essentials in those handy travel containers, round out your beauty bag with this summer set of mini and full-size bestsellers from Sephora. The brand says that it comes with $134 worth of beauty favorites, including Super Goop's Lightweight Unseen Sunscreen, Milk Beauty's Hydro Cooling Face Stick, Tarte's Surfer Curl Mascara, and my personal favorite, the Viral Tanning Drops. There's a total of 10 products, so you are really getting the most bang for your buck and they are all perfectly sized for packing. Another travel essential we all need this summer is a pair of sunglasses, and we found the perfect pair for women and men. We actually discovered these popular sunglasses on social media, and they are going viral because they are so affordable. I mean, if you just look at this design, they're super sleek. They look so much more expensive than they actually are, and people who swear by these think they look good on everybody. Plus. They're so affordable. If you're like me and you lose your sunglasses all the time, you can buy two pairs, one for your bag and another for the car. These last two finds are things you didn't really know you needed, but once you use them and bring them along for your summer vacations, you will not be able to travel without them. First, we have the battery-powered Philips One by Sonicare Electric Toothbrush. 
This thing is genius. No more tiny travel toothbrushes or those flimsy manual toothbrushes that you get at the hotel. This electric toothbrush does all the work for you and it comes in a really sleek case that's not gonna take up too much space in your toiletry bag. And it has a two minute timer with 30 second notification vibration so that according to the brand, you can get a deep clean every single time. And it's at a price we like under $20. Another hidden gem is this stainless steel water bottle with a secret compartment. The brand says this 18 ounce bottle can keep your beverage cold for up to 24 hours and hot for up to 12. But the coolest part is that the bottom unscrews to reveal a hidden compartment for valuables like your keys, your cash, and your cards. It also has a leak-proof lid, a carabiner, and according to the brand, has a sweat-free exterior. This is a must-have for all those pool and beach days. Let's run through the products one more time. The Ever Snug Travel Blanket and Pillow, the Travel Organizer Pouch, the Amazon Essentials Wristlet Wallet, the Kitsch Ultimate Travel Set, the Vacay All Day All Over Face Set, the Sojo's Polarized Sunglasses, the Philips One Sonicare Toothbrush, and the Stainless Steel Water Bottle. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's a wrap for Editor's Picks. Up next, content creator and founder of Hotel Lobby Candle, Lindsay Silverman, is here with us to share her travel must-haves. Stay tuned. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hi there, welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. 
If anyone knows travel, it's our guest today, Lindsay Silverman. She is a content creator and the founder of Hotel Lobby Candle, and she's here to share her travel must-haves with us. Lindsay, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm so excited that you're here. All right, so we're all about summer travel here, but I wanna start out with your journey, right? You started out as an intern at Vogue, and now you have several hats, several businesses, one of which is your candle line. But how did you capture the scent of the candle? So my career journey really started as an intern in the Vogue fashion closet, and I worked my way up to becoming a luxury travel journalist, and I got to travel around the world and stay at some absolutely incredible luxury hotels as part of my job. And throughout that experience, you know, there was something that I found that was always so compelling and really special about the way luxury hotels would pump these scents inside their lobbies. And so I always thought how amazing it would be to create a brand that would be able to bring that experience into everyone's home, whether you are traveling, not traveling, or have just gotten back from a trip. So that's why I launched Hotel Lobby Candle. Um, we launched the brand in 2020. Well, congratulations. I love that we get to experience that in the comfort of our own homes. We're gonna talk about your candle line in just a little bit. But Lindsay, I heard that you've been to 63 countries, that you've traveled to 63 countries. First of all, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. I, I'm pretty sure it's exactly 63. Exactly 63. Okay, so that's a lot to go through. Do you have a favorite travel memory from any of those 63 countries? I went to India for the first time uh, a couple of years ago with a group of other creators and photographers, and I've been wanting to go to India forever. It was sensory overload. Yeah. You know, the food was incredible. The people were, were incredible from a, a visual perspective. Being able to travel with other photographers and creators, it was truly one of the most incredible experiences. And you know, like any travel experience, there were missed flights, there were <laughs> misconnections. It was all the kind of craziness and yeah. chaos that comes with traveling around the world, but it was incredible. Oh, I love that. I had Indian food last night. It is my favorite, so I'm adding that to my bucket list. Since you are the expert here, do you have any words of advice for people that are planning their big vacation this summer? Yeah, I would just say, you know, you can never be too prepared. Now there's so much uncertainty, and I think you really just have to be willing to kind of go with the flow a little bit more Things change, you know, some restaurants may have tougher restrictions, that hotel amenities may not be the same as what you're used to, but I think as long as you kind of go into your trip with a very open-minded attitude, I also think it's really important to remember that the hospitality industry has been hit so hard by the pandemic. A lot of places are understaffed and just be patient with people. Remember, like, a lot of these people are working the job of two people and, and, you know, tip well and be grateful for a really good service. And I think I just like have grace when you're traveling. Just remember that things are not the way they were four or five years ago. That is excellent advice. I love that. Let's dive into your pigs. The first one here, let's take to the skies with this air mount. But how does it work? Okay, so I don't know about you, but I have noticed that all of a sudden the TVs on the back of the seats in planes have miraculously disappeared. And now we're being told by a lot of airlines to use our phones to stream our in-flight entertainment. And a lot of times that catches you by surprise and you're sitting there trying to set your phone up on your sweatshirt or your hat. And there are a couple of these in-flight air mounts that will just mount your phone, clips to the back of the seat in front of you or it clips to the tray table and it's just like having a mini TV, except that it's on your phone. You don't have to worry about propping it up or getting it just right. I mean, it's such a clever device. Moving on to our next clever device for summer travel. So let's talk about this. Why should we use a steamer over an iron? Actually, I was just away this past weekend and my husband loves to iron and he there was no iron in the hotel, so he called front desk and they didn't have one. And so it's one of the things where I just love traveling with a steamer. It's so convenient. It will get the wrinkles out of your clothes so quickly. This travel steamer is so small. I travel with it, but then I also just use it in my own home too. That's such a good idea. And I feel like when you're going on vacation, you still want your outfits to look on point and look beautiful. A steamer is the perfect way to do that. Speaking of looking on point and beautiful, uh, some of these hotels don't have the best light. I like this LED mirror. Tell me about it. Okay, so I have one right here. And what's amazing about it is that um, it's super compact. 
you can fold it up like this. It's literally the width of a, a small book or a magazine and you can um, adjust the lighting. It even has three different settings. So you can have neutral light, warm light, or cool light. You can see right here what a difference it makes to the lighting on my face. Just doing wow. your makeup, good lighting. You can really do your makeup anywhere and you don't have to worry about what type of mirror lighting situation there is in your hotel. And I like, like exactly what you said, how sleek and compact it is because I do tend to overpack. So I like that this can fit in to my suitcase. Now, moving on to the next item that we have. I have to admit, I didn't necessarily think about this as a summer travel essential, summer travel item, the Apple AirTag. Why do we need it? If you put an Apple AirTag in your check bag, and you know, God forbid if something happens, it gets lost, you're able to track where your bag is. Even if the airline doesn't seem to be able to help you locate it, you'll be able to find where it is um, by slipping an AirTag into the bag and then connecting it to your phone. That is such a clever idea. I love that. But I also love that you can also use it post summer travel, right? You can put it on your keys, on your wallet. So great for summer, but also great for everyday use. All right, and we cannot let you go without talking about the last item, essential for summer travel, this candle. Of course, your candle line. Can you tell me what the inspiration was behind the candle line? So Hotel Lobby Candle was inspired by the scents inside five-star hotels around the world. And each one of our candles really draws inspiration from a different place and a different kind of idea and moment. So the one you have right there is called Spa. And that was our most recent launch. It's probably one of the most um, highly anticipated launches we've had. I can tell by just looking at your face. I love it. I love it. When you smell it, it just automatically calms you. The scent is very fresh and it has water mint and eucalyptus Ooh. and jasmine and just super relaxing and refreshing. And then I think you also have with you our island candle, which I kind of consider a quintessential like summer candle. If you like coconut and vanilla and almond, this is gonna be your favorite candle. We have a lot of people who've tried all of ours and island is their you know number one favorite. That one, is that yes. your favorite? Linen? Yeah, I, I love, okay, first of all, I love all of them, but yes, tell me about yeah. linen. So linen was inspired by that crisp, fresh linen that you get when you walk into your hotel room for the first time. But what I wanted to do is make it sort of different. We didn't want it to make it smell like a dryer sheet or something so expected. So we added a little sandalwood and a little bit of a smoky, rich, deep notes to mm -hmm. it so mm -hmm. that it just smelled really clean and fresh, but it had a little bit of depth. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, that, that linen candle is really sexy. It's just for also a lot of people, it's their number one favorite. All right, Lindsay, I love all of these candles. It's hard for me to find a favorite, but do you have a favorite scent? Right now, the spa candle, I have had a very stressful week. And for me, the spa candle just helps bring me back to a very calm place. I, I was saying before I saw your face when you smelled it, it yeah. just, everyone has that reaction. When they smell it, it just automatically calms you. It's like aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, put it next to your desk, put it next to your bed. We've designed the candles to smell even when they're not lit. So you're really getting that like hotel luxury spa experience all throughout the day whenever you're sitting next to it. I like the idea that I don't even have to light it. Lindsay, this smells amazing. I wish everybody could smell it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for letting us know what we need for summer travel. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you in safe travels. Yeah, same to you. Thank you, Lindsay. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. The in-flight air mount, the handheld steamer, the folding LED mirror, the Apple air tag, and the hotel lobby candles. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Chassie Post is gonna share her go-to travel products in Style Finder. Don't go away. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. 
In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and we've been talking about summer travel essentials, and I've got the hottest items that are stylish and functional while on the go. And remember, see the QR code in the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Okay, so I feel like you guys are getting a peek into my closet this episode because this set is a piece that I own and love. And believe me, I'm not alone. This two-piece jogger set is a huge fan favorite and for good reason. This little set is super duper cute while being super duper comfortable. And you have probably heard me say it many times over, but I'm obsessed with sets. Why? Because it takes the guesswork out of getting dressed, and a fabulous set looks like a jumpsuit. I mean, how chic and effortless. Or mix and match the two separates with the rest of your wardrobe for endless options. So we've got an easy, slightly oversized top and flattering jogger-style pants that really come in handy when you're packing light, because you can wear it in so many different ways. And I love all the different sleeve lengths. I mean, it comes in a tank, it comes in a short sleeve, long sleeve. So all of this is key when you're on the go in the summer. Now, forgive the extreme enthusiasm, but I am in love with this dress. What a fabulously stylish and versatile and unbelievably affordable dress. And I'm always looking for an easy to pack, easy to wear dress when I'm planning a trip. And this one checks all the boxes and more. So first up, check out this silhouette. It's an easy, loose fitting, midi length tank dress. I mean, sign me up. With its pullover style and one and done appeal, it's the perfect go-to. Also, check out the hem. It's got a high-low hem. Secondly, color blocking, right? Color blocking is such a big trend these days, and we've got two of my favorite colors here right on this dress. Pink and magenta. I mean, pink on pink. Doesn't get any better than that. And how amazing are these other colors? I mean, look, it's a neutral with a pop of orange. So good. We've also got navy, with a pop of light blue at the bottom. And this dress can really go anywhere. Throw it in your suitcase, and when you get to your destination, you can wear it to the beach, you can wear it to the pool, you can wear it to brunch, you can wear it for a night out on the town. Now another thing on my list when it comes to summer travel is a great pair of white sneakers. And these sneakers are about as 
good as it gets. I was so excited by this find that I snapped them up for myself and I am thoroughly impressed. I mean, these chic sneaks get an A plus in both the comfort and style department and I just love them. And here's why. First of all, a classic white sneaker in general has become a must have wardrobe foundation piece and they go with everything in your closet from floral midi dresses and skirts to jeans to suits. But these sneakers have a few bells and whistles that make them an even better buy. The platform, I mean, look at this. I love a platform sneaker. You're seeing platforms everywhere this summer, but this is nothing crazy. It's about an inch and a half. I love the elongating effect of a platform. Plus, it's easy to clean. And of course, the classic style. Who doesn't love a classic court shoe, lace-up design? And this has also got cute metallic details. And one of my absolute favorite things about these sneakers is they have a memory foam insert. So they're incredible cushy on my feet. I should know because I wore them to this set today. And lastly, I think they look so great, plus incredibly stylish. And they're under $20. And trust me, no one's ever gonna know it. Now, if you've been wondering what the hottest new hat trend is gonna be for the summer, look no further because we've got it here, the visor. And shoppers are obsessed, yes, the visor is trending big time thanks to the tennis core trend that we are seeing everywhere. But this season, visors aren't just for sports, though we love its sporty vibe. They're also for every day. You can wear them running around town, to the pool, to the beach, and of course on the tennis court and the golf course, right? And this stylish option is at the top of our wish list. And we love the fabulous straw material. Straw accessories are a really big trend this season, but it is also packable. That's right. You can roll this visor up and throw it in your carry-on or your suitcase or even in the back of your car. Now, in the summer, we show more skin. And if you don't already know about First Aid Beauty's Bump Eraser, then get ready to fall in love. This brand has some mega fans and for good reason. Now, the hype around the KP Bump Eraser borders on obsession. In fact, according to the brand, one tube of the Bump Eraser is sold every 45 seconds globally. It is a huge bestseller and has over 48,000 likes, or should I say loves, on Sephora.com. So let me break this little skin wonder down. So the KP Bump Eraser is essentially a body scrub that features both chemical and physical exfoliators for serious skin polishing power. According to the brand, the ingredients include glycolic and lactic acids at a combined level of 10%. So this is gonna help loosen the skin's top layer and decongest pores. And it also has pumice buffing beads that then help to whisk away dead skin. And shoppers also rave about how incredibly smooth their skin feels. And the cherry on top, this fabulous travel size. It's perfect for throwing in your bag and hitting the road. Last but not least, don't you just love a fashionable and functional travel gadget? I know I do. And this Lay & Go Cosmo Drawstring Makeup Organizer Bag is as cute as it is clever. And here's what makes it so cool. It's a patented cosmetic bag that lays flat and allows you to see all of your makeup at once. And you can clean up in seconds. Just pull the drawstring cord and the Cosmo cinches up and closes for storage or travel. And it's got lots of really useful features. When it's open, the raised lip keeps makeup and brushes from rolling off the counter. And it also creates a clean and dry surface for you to do your makeup. It's also got zippered storage pockets and lots of brush holders. So you can fit a whole lot in this little bag. And we love that it's machine washable and wipeable. So key. Plus, it's great not just for vacation travel, but also for daily travel. You know, to the gym, office, you name it. So let's go through these products one more time. And you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the two-piece jogger sweatshirt set, the PK knit dress with high-low hem, the white platform sneaker, the Belize It packable visor, the First Aid Beauty KP bump eraser, 
and the Lay & Go Cosmo Drawstring Makeup Organizer Bag. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's a wrap on Style Finder. And for our show, it's been fun showing you our favorites. So tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. Say there today all day. Are you looking to ditch some dairy? Well, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Samadata remaking two classically creamy dishes without the cream. First up, she's going to make a vegan mac and cheese with a velvety sauce. Then for dessert, Sama turns overripe bananas into a luscious, dairy-free, nice cream. Can you imagine if they started making, like, onion-scented candles? That would be such a crazy choice. I'd probably buy one. If you can't eat dairy, then don't worry, I got you. I'm always coming up with new ways to make creative, delicious dips, fillings, and desserts without any of the dairy. I really just want to hashtag make dairy free cool. I'm going to show you how to make two of my favorite recipes that are traditionally loaded with lots of cheese and milk. First up, my masala mac and cheese, and next, because we can never forget dessert, my banana cardamom ice cream. One of the first ways that I dabbled into cooking, and maybe it's a bit generous to say cooking, was through box mac and cheese. I used to love that mildly suspect bright orange powder. But today, we are making my masala mac and cheese. The flavor profile is a little bit more elevated, but still just as creamy and decadent. Let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is dice up my onion. So I wanted to add some cooked onions into the sauce because I think it adds a lot more flavor. We want different levels of flavor and spice, and by cooking these onions down in some olive oil, it's really gonna get us there. I'm gonna peel this guy. I am just dicing my onion right there. Little rough, don't worry, because we are going to blend it later. After it's been cooked, of course. I've just diced my onions, and now I'm just gonna heat up some olive oil on my pan. Okay, my olive oil is shimmering. Time to add my onions. I also want to make sure I'm seasoning my onions with some salt and pepper. A little salt. And some freshly ground black pepper. Okay, these onions look delicious. They look nice and golden brown. I'm gonna turn my stove off, set these aside to cool, and get to work on my creamy sauce. Before we get going on my sauce, I have to tell you about cashews. When you soak cashews, they absorb a lot of that water, expanding them and making them a lot easier to blend. Because they're so buttery, when you actually do blend them after they've been soaked, they can create creamy dips, dressing, sauces, desserts, mac and cheese sauce, anything, you name it. But if you skip soaking them, and please don't, you'll get a really crumbly and mealy sauce, and that's just not cute. It's really important that you soak your cashews for at least 24 hours overnight, or you can flash soak them for an hour in hot water. Best part about this mac and cheese is it comes together in this blender. What could be better? Mac and cheese in a blender? I'm on board. We're gonna add our cashews into our blender. Make sure when you're making this recipe that you only use raw cashews. No salt on it, no roasting. Because I want a little bit of a sweet taste and I want that nice orange color for this mac and cheese, I'm using a roasted sweet potato. I'm just gonna peel the skin off with my hands. By the way, if you're worried that I'm handling a hot potato, I'm not. This has been cooled. Don't worry about me. I'm okay. I'm just gonna take about half of this, pop it in my blender. You thought I forgot about my onions? You were wrong. They're going straight in here. Now to get that really delicious, cheesy, savory flavor, I'm using some nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is a really common vegan cheese replacement. Adding this straight in my blender. It adds a bit of umami as well. Now for my spices. This is a masala mac and cheese after all. Got some cumin. Adding a bit of cayenne. Cayenne gives me that heat. I want a little bit of spice in this masala mac. 
I'm gonna add some turmeric. Turmeric is not only delicious, but it also adds that really gorgeous yellow color that we're chasing for this mac and cheese. And finally, we've got some garlic powder. To help everything blend together, I've got some vegetable broth. Veggie broth is also a bit better than adding something like water because it's got a little bit more flavor in there. Okay, are you ready to blend? Okay, let's do it. And if you need to, feel free to scrape down the sides of the blender to get everything well incorporated. Boom. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt, a little more pepper. Back to blending we go. Okay. I'm really pleased to announce that my mac and cheese sauce is done. Looks amazing. Time to make our pasta. Got my cute little elbows here. My water is boiling. Don't forget, please, please don't forget to salt your pasta water, okay? I'm gonna do that right now. Pasta water is salted. It's time for our pasta. So I am using elbows here for my little cute pasta shape. I wanted to get that very iconic mac and cheese vibe, but you can totally use whatever short pasta works for you. A shell would be nice here, penne would be nice here. Okay, so I'm just gonna fish for a piece, see how we're doing on doneness. This is the best way to check. Just pinch it with your fingers or just bite into it. Perfect. Our pasta is ready. Time to drain. Okay, don't drop the sama. <laughs> don't drop it. One more thing to do is just add our sauce to our pasta. I'm gonna add this into my bowl. I'm really excited about this sauce. Just so you know, this makes a lot of sauce. I like a saucy mac, but you can totally reserve some for later if you want it to be a little less saucy. All right, time to plate. <sighs> Sorry, I just gasped. I was just taken aback. Cream. All right, little fresh parsley just to top. Little bit of color, little bit of green, little bit of herb just to bring this out. And then I'm just gonna finish it with some freshly ground black pepper. Have you ever seen a more velvety mac and cheese? I just have to capture this. Here I go. <sighs> this is gonna be an action shot. Okay, I think I got it. Time for me to dig in. I've never been more happy than this moment right now. <laughs> there's so much flavor going on and it's so creamy. You would not believe there's no dairy in this. I'm not telling you to throw away your box mac and cheese, but um, I'm definitely telling you to give this a try. You will not regret it. Mm. So good. It's me, and I can never have any dinner or lunch without a little bit of dessert. So up next, I've got my banana cardamom ice cream, and you're absolutely gonna love it. I'm gonna grab the ingredients. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. 
We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. If you thought that you needed an ice cream maker to make ice cream at home, then think again. My banana cardamom ice cream comes together in a blender and takes a little nice nap in the freezer to create the most luscious vegan ice cream. Let's make it. Listen closely. I hate wasting bananas. It's so sad. Ripe bananas, really spotty bananas, are perfect for so many different types of recipes, and especially this ice cream. They help create that really luscious, creamy texture without any of the dairy. I've got my frozen bananas here. I'm just gonna pop them into my blender. When I freeze bananas, I like to cut them up in little pieces just to make it easier to blend. Really important that you're using ripe frozen bananas because we're not actually gonna add any added sugar to this recipe. All the sweetness is gonna come straight from those bananas. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of creamy almond butter into my blender. Because the bananas are super sweet, I like adding a nut butter like an almond or even a peanut butter just to balance out that sweetness. I love using cardamom in this ice cream because it's got this really nice piney, fruity undertone. Really delicious. If you don't have it, don't worry, you can totally sub cinnamon instead. Now to help everything come together, I'm just going to add a little bit of almond milk. Here's the important thing. We're not trying to go for a smoothie here, right? So we're just going to add a little bit of milk just to get the blender going. Time to blend. Time to scrape down the sides of the blender. I'd rather scrape down the size of the blender a million times to get that really creamy, thick, almost soft serve consistency ice cream rather than add too much almond milk and be left with a smoothie. Can we just take a moment for my blender, please? It literally does the absolute most for me. It's key when I'm creating all of my delicious dairy-free recipes. Okay, I think we made it. I could eat this now, and you could too, but I do want a little bit of an ice cream scoopable consistency, so that's why I'm transferring it to the freezer. Okay, ice cream is in my container safely. It's ready for the freezer for an hour or more. I know, I know, I'm sorry, but patience is key here. Let's do it. My ice cream is done! A little patience gets us a very long way. I am just gonna cut some strawberries to top my ice cream with, and then I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> no, I did not just sneak a strawberry. I have been waiting for a long time for my dessert, so it is time to scoop my ice cream. I'm very excited. <sighs> I just gasped <laughs> yet again. Oh, you thought I was a single scoop girl? Think again. Oh, you thought I was a double scoop girl? Think once more. Time to top with some of my strawberries, just for some color, just for some freshness. I would say this looks too pretty to eat, but I'm for sure gonna eat it. I will take a picture though. Okay, I'm ready to taste. It is crazy that you can make something this creamy with frozen bananas. It's crazy, it's wild. The bananas are so sweet and we've got that almond butter to balance it out and that cardamom brings all the flavors to life. The next time you're craving something super creamy and delicious but you can't have dairy, look, there's options for you. These are so easy to make. I made so many of my dairy-free recipes in my blender Easy to whip up, just as decadent, just as creamy and delicious without the dairy. Hold me back. I am going in again. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
Women's basketball has been systematically held back after 49 years of Title IX, and we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. This is seriously so good. It's like... The sweetness is perfect. It's not too much. It's not too little. It's like my little Goldilocks sweetness. Mmm. It's so good. Mmm. Who doesn't love a muffin? As for me, whenever I enter any bakery or cafe, my eyes go directly to the muffins. I am obsessed. Am I the hashtag muffin woman? I don't know, that's a question for another day. But I've always wanted to create my favorite bakery style muffins at home. So after a little testing, I came up with two that are always on rotation for me. First up, a blueberry muffin just sweetened with some honey and lemon poppy seed muffin tops with a cute lemon cashew glaze. I always bake with chocolate over fruit. That's typically my MO. But I will say, I always make a little exception when it comes to a blueberry muffin. They're just my favorite staple comfort baked good. But I was thinking, why should I go to a bakery when I can make one in my own kitchen? So, let's get started. I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees and I've lined my little muffin tin with these cute muffin liners. They're so cute. Now I can start on my wet ingredients. First up, I've got one egg. Just cracked my egg in here. Gonna whisk it really well. I want no separation between the yolk and the whites. This looks nice and uniform. Now. I'm gonna add in my almond butter. I find that the almond butter kind of adds a really nice nuttiness to these muffins, it's so delicious. I'm gonna mix my egg and my almond butter together really nicely so it's well incorporated. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add my melted and cooled coconut oil. This is gonna serve as a nice butter replacement. Okay, and now I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract. And for my star, I cannot have my honey blueberry muffins without the honey, that would simply be wrong. I like to use local honey for these muffins especially because it's such an important flavor component. I really want to use the good stuff. And finally, I want a little touch of acidity just to bring out all of those flavors, so I'm going to add a little bit of fresh lemon juice. Perfect. Mix the lemon juice in there, it smells so good. Okay, my wet ingredients look perfect. They're well incorporated, they're well mixed which means it's time for me to move on to my dry ingredients. I'm using almond flour for this recipe, which is honestly my favorite flour to bake with. It's super cakey and dense, so it creates a really nice texture in these muffins. I'm gonna add some baking powder and a little pinch of salt, just a little, perfect. Now I'm just gonna whisk my dry ingredients together and make sure everything's well incorporated. You know what time it is. <laughs> it's time to combine our wet and dry ingredients. 
We want an even, even muffin batter. It smells so good already. All right, I'm just gonna add a little bit of almond milk to help everything come together a bit better. This is looking great. Now, this is a blueberry muffin. So I've got my gorgeous fresh blueberries here. Just proceed with caution when you're folding your blueberries into the batter. We don't want them to burst. They're precious, they're delicate. Just like, be careful of their feelings, okay? Okay. We look nice and well incorporated here. So, it's time for me to add them into my muffin tin. I like using a cookie scoop for cookies, for muffins, because it allows me to just capture even amounts of batter per muffin tin, per cookie. Makes it really consistent. And then you get a nice even bake too. Perfect. All right, so all that's left to do is bake them. They're going in the oven 30 to 35 minutes. I'm really excited to see them on the other end of this. Um, should I open a bakery? Just wondering. They look so cute. I have let them cool for 15 minutes, which means that it's definitely time for me to eat them. Okay, let's take a look. I mean, come on. They look so good. Before I dive into these, okay, I'm gonna have to take a picture. I'm trying to start my own bakery. I gotta have some documentation of this moment. Pretty iconic stuff, I have to say. I think it's time for me to try them. I think I've waited long enough. Here's a question. Do you bite into your muffin or do you rip a piece off? I'm gonna be dainty today and rip a little piece off. Here I go. Okay, oh, almost lost a blueberry. Hmm, it's crazy how well the blueberries and the honey go together. Mm. It's so good. Speaking of muffins, if you only eat the muffin tops, don't worry, I'm not judging you. In fact, my next recipe is for you because I'm gonna be making my lemon poppy seed muffin tops. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. And who's this? Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. And who's this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You and I both know that we are kind of only here for the muffin tops, or at least that's my favorite part of the muffin. So for my next recipe, I thought I would whip up a lemon poppy seed muffin top with a lemon cashew glaze to satisfy all of you muffin top lovers out there. And I know you're out there. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees and because I love being prepared, I have lined my pan with parchment paper and now I get to work on my wet ingredients. All right, I'm gonna crack two eggs. Now I'm gonna add in my melted and cooled coconut oil. 
All right, whisking that nicely. I'm using maple syrup and coconut sugar to sweeten these muffin tops. They're my two favorite sweeteners. They add a really nice, robust taste, especially when paired together. Adding my maple syrup. Reminds me of pancakes and waffles, but it's kind of better in a muffin. This is a lemon poppy seed muffin top, which means we can't make it without the lemons, right? First, I'm gonna zest some lemons. I love using the lemon zest. It really amplifies that lemon flavor in these muffin tops. Now, I'm gonna juice my lemons. Because I love precision, <laughs> I'm gonna juice my lemons straight into this measuring cup so I know exactly how much I'm using. Okay, we've got our lemon juice, and now we're just gonna add it straight into the rest of our wet ingredients. Mix that up really nicely. And for one more layer of our sweetness, I'm gonna add some coconut sugar. Super warm, it's rich, it's golden. All right, our dry ingredients, very important. Just as important as our wet ingredients. Here, I'm using a combination of almond flour and oat flour. I find that almond flour is pretty dense. The only ingredient is almonds. And with oats, it's a little bit lighter. I'm gonna add some baking powder, a little pinch of salt to bring out all of that sweetness. Just a little. I'm gonna whisk this together. Just for a little something extra, I'm gonna add in some rolled oats. I find that this gives a lot of texture. It's really nice to have in these muffin tops. And because I'm really trying to recreate that iconic lemon poppy seed muffin, we have to have our poppy seeds. Okay, this looks really nice. It's time to combine our wet and dry ingredients and add this in. Perfect. Just gonna fold everything in super gently. Okay, this looks perfect. Time to use my giant cookie scoop and scoop these onto my pan. I like using these because it allows me to get a really nice uniform muffin top. So they're all even, they're all the same size. You know what's really great about a muffin top? You don't need a muffin tin to make them. Just use your cookie sheet. It's a game changer. These are ready for a little journey in the oven, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or until it's nice and golden brown around the edges. Let's go. I've let my muffins cool for about 20 minutes and you know what they need. You know what they're ready for? A little glaze. I'm gonna just preface this for you. I just wanna tell you that this glaze is kind of like a cross between a glaze and a frosting. So I do tend to call it a glosting. And I know I made that word up and I'm honestly pretty proud of myself for it. So let's make our glosting. To make this really creamy, delicious glaze slash frosting, AKA glosting, we are going to be using some cashews. I've soaked these cashews and when you soak them, it actually allows them to absorb that liquid and become really nice and tender and plump. This is gonna be the perfect thing to just blitz up in our blender because it's gonna be really luscious and smooth. I drained the water from my soaked cashews and I'm just gonna pop them in my blender. To complement that gorgeous lemon flavor in our lemon poppy seed muffin tops, I'm going to add some lemon juice into my blender, into my glossing. Now, to sweeten this up, I'm going to add some maple syrup. Time for a little oat milk. Finally, to bring out all of those flavors, balance everything out, a little pinch of salt. Now I'm just going to blend this up. Look at this gorgeous glossing. All right, we're ready to put this glaze on. Let me give you some options because we love options. You can do a little drizzle like this. It's so pretty. It's so thick and creamy. Do a little delicate, unfussy drizzle. Or if you want to really commit, you can just gloss that whole thing. Don't be shy. Getting it to really fall over the sides like that. It's really good. One last thing to really finish it off, seal the deal, a little extra poppy seed garnish. Those poppy seeds add some nice nuttiness. Gotta take a picture. I mean, <laughs> that frosting, it like, who gave the frosting permission to do that right there? It's almost unfair. Now it's my time to eat. My turn to eat. Pretty, right? Okay, I'm ready.
You know what's the worst thing in a lemon baked good? Not enough lemon. This is so tart, perfectly sweet. I have no rules for myself. <laughs> mm. 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 I don't know, I feel like I've found a new calling in life and I think it might be to open a muffin store. We'll have plenty of muffin tops, plenty of regular muffins. I hope this inspired you to make muffins at home. I mean, this is so easy to make. The frosting slash glossing, also very easy. I just hope you never go without a muffin again in your own home. You know, I love me some country music and high up on my list of favorites, Thomas Rhett, baby. You know, I've listened to that Die a Happy Man song probably about a gazillion times. Okay, Thomas was born with a passion for music at his very core. He and his dad, country singer Rhett Akins, have worked on music together since Thomas was just a little boy. His love of music has carried him all the way to where he is right now. Thomas, his wife Lauren, and I have been friendly for years, but recently we've connected on more than just music. We're also parents by way of adoption. Thomas and Lauren brought their beautiful daughter Willa Gray home nearly seven years ago, and they've gone on to welcome three more daughters to their family, Ada James, Lennon Love, and Lily Carolina. Between recording, touring, and parenting, it's kind of tough for Thomas to make space for much else, but I did catch up with him for a rare moment of quiet from his home in Nashville, just as he's getting ready to release his sixth studio album, Where We Started, and among the many topics we touched on, where he started. Stories that make me appreciate Thomas and his music even more. All right. Well, first of all, uh, Thomas, it's great to see you. As always, how are you? Good to see you, too. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So, Thomas, I, I feel like you're, you're really going 100 miles an hour. And I admire it because we often say, this is my moment. I got to catch it. It's like lightning in a bottle. I don't want to miss it. But if you were to have a day that was just for you, again, Lauren and the kids aside, you have an open book, a, a blank slate for one day. Yeah. How does that day play out for you? Um, <clears throat> I think I would first of all have to get on a plane. Uh, I have a hard time finding peace in Nashville, but I've I've found a lot of peace and solitude out west, whether it's in Montana or Utah or Colorado. And I think a perfect day for me would be to take my fly fishing rod out mm. to the Boulder River in Montana and just wait it the entire day. Just like start oh. at the bottom, go to the top. Uh, don't even care if I catch a fish or not. Just the the simple act of throwing a rod in and out of the river, I think like that that is the epitome of my uh, perfect alone day, which I have not had an alone day, I think, in almost five years. So yeah, at least I, I need I to schedule say. that. So what is it that you get out of being by yourself and throwing that rod? Like what feelings yeah. do you get from that? Uh, there's no one to compare myself to except for myself. Um, mm -hmm. Like... I think as awesome as social media can be, uh, I think I think it ruins a lot of people, uh, and I'm I'm in that box. And I think, I mean, shoot, I guess I've had social media for almost ten years now, and I feel like every time I log on to my Instagram account, I get this like really quick little rush of like, oh my goodness, what did someone say about my song, or what did they say about this? But then I see one negative thing, and like my day is just like ruined. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so when when I do like get to put my phone down for five or six hours, I find my anxiety level just going Dropping. down and down and down and down. Now, I do have four kids, so the anxiety does stay at a, at a little <laughs> right here. Um, yeah. But I just feel like the more that I can detach from the overload of information, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just don't feel like we as humans were built to absorb, and, and you absorb more knowledge than anybody that I know every day. And like, I just don't know that we were meant to know as much as we know. I think when I when I am away from anything social or news yeah. wise, yeah. like yeah. I am a better dad, I am a better husband, I'm a better friend because there is space to yes. give that part of myself. When were you your happiest? I think I was, in a strange way, happier at my core 
when I felt like I wasn't under a microscope, if that makes any sense. Um, I know you've, I know you can relate to that, Mm -hmm. but like, would I change anything that I have for the world? No. Um, Mm -mm. But there are days where you you do kind of wish you could just be just you at the core, no matter what, no matter what restaurant you're in, no matter if you're at Disney World, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it's uh, it's that that has changed a lot. I mean, I I have learned how to find joy uh, a ton, mm-hmm. like through through quote unquote being famous or being under the spotlight. But mm-hmm. there just seemed to be something so simple. I don't know yeah. about being in high school or yeah. being in, being in college. Yes. Um, um, and so, you know, I think that's, that's something that Lauren and I both try to create in our lives is simplicity mm. and, and normalcy. You know, a lot of people always ask how are we raising our kids and we're trying to raise them as normal as humanly possible, which is really challenging because our lives are anything but normal, you know, mm-hmm. but I think striving for simplicity has brought Lauren and I and our kids the most joy that, that we mm. could imagine. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. From the moment I met you, whenever that was, a long, long time ago when you were just getting started, to right now, you are, I mean, you seem exactly the same to me. I can still (laughs) drunk FaceTime you and you'll pick up, which is my definitely my litmus test. It's my favorite part of my week, I'll be honest with you. (laughs) I don't do it every week, but I do it often enough. No, I I, I don't want people to think I'm a stalker. (laughs) No, No, me and Lauren love it so much. and I would say the same about you. Not, I mean, mm. not that this is like a mm-hmm. compliment back yeah. and forth type thing, but I, it, it is very, very true. Like, you, you are one of the most down to earth people that I've ever met, especially mm. with the, you're in front of the world every single day. Um, yeah. And so it, when I when I describe my my being under a microscope, you are a million times more <laughs> than that. But I remember when Lauren and I first got married. Um, we, we I mean, I, I think I maybe had five hundred bucks to my name and my dad had just bought a condo and I told him like we can't pay rent and so he just made us pay the HOA fee which was like $45 a month and even that hurt it was our first Christmas as a married couple I just signed a record deal and uh we lived across the street from a um a Harris Teeter which I don't know if y'all have those up there but it was like a grocery store and like I'm talking about five nights a week we would buy a frozen pizza and the cheapest bottle of wine we could find and like and we'd go to the Christmas tree lot and I remember Lauren, I was like, why don't we just go to freaking Target and buy, you know, a $9 fake Christmas tree? And she was like, well, because I've always had a real one. And uh-huh. Christmas trees are like 70 bucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> a tree is $70. And I remember calling my business manager at the time and being like, hey, can I afford this? And we went back and put that Christmas tree up and made a frozen pizza and had a bottle of wine. And you want to talk about content yet proud that, that we had accomplished that. Well, you and Lauren uh, met when you were little and then ended up getting married after you guys have lived a little. But you were you all were both young and people were telling you, what are you doing? You yeah. were like 22 or something? Yeah, we were 22 when we got married for sure. Yeah. Did everyone, who tried to talk you out of it? Um, I don't think it was like a, a talking out of. It was more yeah. of just like, make sure. Make sure. You know what I mean? Which is yeah. which is normal. You know, I think for a parent to say to a kid, like I might say the same thing, you know, when, yeah. if, if my daughters were like, hey, I'm 17 and I found the guy I want to marry. I'm yeah. like, are you sure? You know? Positive. But I can also be like, you know what? If that's your heart and that's what you believe, like, 
here to support you, you know. So you um, were sure and she was sure? We were sure, but we also knew each other for since like third grade. You yeah. know what I mean? Like she knew me as a sixth grader, as a tenth grader, um, as an idiot in college. I mean she 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 was with me through every every up and down phase of life and so when mm-hmm. we got married we were already best friends anyway, and they, you know, my parents had always said, "Make sure you marry your best friend," you know. And mm-hmm. I was like, "Well, I mean, this is uh, this is my best friend, and she is very attractive, and I'm <laughs> I'm I'm here for it." And uh, but you know, I think like at that time, it, it wasn't super cool to be married and be a uh, a country singer. You know what I mean? And I yeah, just thought that was the stupidest thing in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was kind of weird. Like at the time, I guess this would have been 2012. I mean. There were love songs, but like there, there weren't there weren't like a lot of love songs about like from a from a country singer being like y'all know who this is and this is who I'm singing about. This is my wife. Yeah, this is you for know? her. Right. Um, from the get go of my career, Lauren was just such a part of. I mean, we were a package deal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like she came to she was at every show. The fans knew her. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew her. And so when Die Happy Man came out, like yeah, I think the song I think Die Happy Man is good. But I think that it was great at the time because it hadn't been done in a while in that way. And it was almost like the stars kind of lined up for that song. With all I got is your hand in my hand. Baby, I could die a happy man. Your parents are divorced. Yeah. Were you scared getting married? Did you think our, our patterns, do they repeat? Like, were you worried? Um... Yeah, I mean, there was a part of me that was just like, is is that going to be me too? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. I remember, you know, Lauren's dad, he flies like uh, jets for a living. Like, he owns oh. like a charter company in Nashville. And, you know, in the 90s, he would fly, you know, you, know, you name that country artist, mm-hmm. he flew him around. And so he'd been around the business for a while. And I remember before me and Lauren got married, he was like, you better keep your head on straight. You know what I mean? He was like, you bet you better not do anything out there on the road because I, I promise you I've seen it and I will call you out immediately. And I was like, you don't have anything to worry about, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah. but as I got into it, I, I, I quickly realized how easy that yeah. could be, yeah. um, without the right boundaries mm-hmm. put in place. Did your parents give you, um, advice like, uh, marriage <clears throat> advice? Uh, yeah, for sure. But you know, like, you know, I think like my dad and my mom, were, were different. They they kind of came from that generation of like, you know, they got pregnant before they were married uh-huh. um, in South Georgia. Mm-hmm. And it was like one of those times in life where it was like, well, we should probably get married. You yeah. know what I mean? But I think kind of early on, you know, my, I think my dad really wanted, I think he had more life that he wanted to live. And, mm-hmm. and you know, I think him looking back, like those are things that he may not be um, proud of, but like, mm-hmm. That's that's just life. You know, we that's live life. and we, we live and we learn. And, you know, um, I feel like I got really blessed with, um, with an amazing family that has that has baggage, just like we all do. When do you think your dad was proudest of you? Um, I think he may just be proud of how I have approached this career. I think he writes with people all the time that go, "Man, how'd your son turn out so good?" You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's it's kind of a joke, but I, but I think he you know he kind of gets like you know my my dad was was pretty wild you know back in the day, and uh-huh. and I, I've definitely had my fair share of wild moments. But I knew that when I when I got married, like this was this was the goal. If everything else fell apart, yeah. this this had to stay together, um, and, yeah. and that that is that is what I vowed the day I got married, and that is what I that is what I plan on, you know, committing to until the the day that I die. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? 
If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Well, I know having kids was something that was um, high on your priority list. The way you went about it was obviously very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Lauren was on a mission trip to Uganda yeah. and fell in love, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, that's just how it happened. So she met Willa. What was it about her, about that specific child of all the children yeah. uh, who Lauren met and, and you got to know? What was it about her? Yeah, you know, that was such a, a crazy time because my wife up to that point had um, – had traveled with me and me solely. You know what I mean? Like she kind of she kind of gave up a lot to to be along my side. Mm -hmm. You know, during this journey. I mean, she went to the University of Tennessee, uh, graduated with a nursing degree. Uh, nursing school about killed her, um, mm -hmm. as I'm sure many many nurses out there. It's freaking hard. Um, but she finished that, and we went into marriage counseling. And our marriage counselor said, "I think y'all need to be fully together your first year on the road because the year that she graduated, I went on this thing called radio tour, which is where you're gone for like eight months and mm. you're literally visiting every country radio station in the country. So if she had gone and worked in the hospital and I'd gone to do that, our first year of marriage would have been completely just mm -hmm. split apart. And so she decided to come with me that whole first year. And that led into the next you know, five years of our marriage. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think my wife ever planned on marrying someone that was doing what I'm doing. Like, I think that if she could have picked at that age, she probably would have picked someone that was going to be home at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And she probably would have lived a whole lot simpler of a life had she done mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, but there was just no denying, uh, you know, our love for each other. And to this day, I mean, I, I just, I literally just look at her and say, thank you. Thank you for marrying me, because I, I would be a total disaster. <laughs> I, I wrote a song last year called I'd Be a Nightmare Single, um, and it is very true. Um, anyway, to, back to your question. That was when she had met a few people that were already doing work in Uganda, and I think my wife at that point had felt a little bit um, passionless, if mm -hmm. you will. I, like, I think she felt like her passions had to be my passions. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had a, that was like a year of like long conversation of like, well, what, you know, what, what is your passion? And she was like, well, I still want to help people medically. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I want to, mm -hmm. I want to use the skill that I trained so hard for. And I was like, well, that's a hundred percent understandable. Mm -hmm. like, let's figure that out, you know, and kind of a, a God thing that she met, uh, this woman named Suzanne who, uh, was already doing ministry and, and, um, mission work in, in Uganda and Lauren went with her and I was still back in America, you know, doing shows and. I remember she sent me a, a picture of this little girl, and uh, in Uganda they had they had named her Blessing. That was the that was the name that they gave her. She didn't have any parents, and uh, and no no siblings um, that that we knew of. And she sent me a picture of her holding Blessing, and she said, "We have got to help, you know, find her family or find find mm -hmm. her a home." And uh, you know they did a ton of research on, you know where where she was found all this kind of stuff and and it was just it was heartbreaking you know like i i can't imagine i don't know one, like one of my children just not not having a family to call mm -hmm. to call home you know and and so i just it just came i don't even remember saying it but it came out of my mouth i was like we'll we'll we will we'll bring her home you know and mm -hmm. my wife was like are you serious and yeah. next thing you know you know we're what why were you so sure what was it about that image I've just never seen my wife glow the way that she was glowing. Like, yeah, I, I can't, I can't describe it, but it already felt like it was a thing. I don't remember saying it. It just, it just erupted out of my stomach, just like happened. And, uh, and then I, you know, we hung up the phone and I was like, what did I just say? Like, and, um, because I don't know that I was ready to be a dad yet. I don't think anyone's ready to be a parent until you are, you know until what I'm saying? You are. Um, that kind of makes me, um, like, I, I feel like whenever, the truth is told like I get this weird wave of emotion yeah. like I get chills and I feel it and you 
that statement you just made there was like a was like a, a tidal wave for me. <laughs> yeah. It was a God moment, you said. Yeah, for that's sure. really, really big. So you got Willa Gray and and then Lauren gets pregnant. Then y'all are off and running. You got four girls now. Yeah. Do you want a boy? I think I've passed that point, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think uh, that's like the most question I get asked is like, when are you yeah. trying again? I mean, Lauren's whole dream, she wanted to have five kids. Like that's, five, since yeah. the day we got married, she's like, I want to have five. And I'm sitting there going, <laughs> that's fine. You know, yeah. five would be great. But we sit there and we go, you know, they're all in such different phases of life. Mm. We're having a hard time figuring out how do we make one-on-one time right. for like all of our kids, for, you know? So, got now. so I told Lauren, I was like, I mean, let's have five, but let's, let's take a, let's take a four year deep breath. <laughs> so... Yeah, exactly. She'll get her five eventually, but you're right. Sometimes you need a minute. As you know, I adopted two children. And a lot of questions come up, which I'm already getting from Haley, and I will get from Hope, too. What questions is Willa Gray asking or are your other daughters asking? And how have you guys navigated that? Because I've got two kids from different countries, and, you know, it's there are questions that pop. Yeah, it's hard, you know, because I think think when you become a parent, you – you're like, well, I'm a dad. I have all the answers, you know, yeah. or I'm a mom. I have yeah. all the answers. Um, and like adoption is, is one of the most beautiful things in the world. And I, and I don't think at the beginning of it, you, I don't think you go, oh, in like six years, I'm going to have to start answering yeah. some like really, yes, really intense questions, you know? And, and I think, I don't know if you felt this at all, but it's kind of like you go, well, what age, mm-hmm. like what age is the right age? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because the world is moving so fast that it's like, mm-hmm. You know, to have a conversation with a six-year-old about that, maybe I'm too old school to think that way, but I go, maybe we need to wait till she's 10. And I, I love the innocence that they have because they don't have any – they haven't been tainted yet yes. by the world. They haven't been jaded by the world. Mm-hmm. Like they, they, don't, they don't see things like adults mm-hmm. see things. And so in, in your parent brain, you're like, well, how do I keep this innocence alive mm-hmm. as long as I possibly as can? As long as possible, yeah. You know, because, I mean, I feel like I read the Bible and God's like, well, you – if if you're not if you don't have the heart of a child, you're not you ain't doing it right. And I'm like, well, how could I have the heart of a child when we're at war and we're at we're, this is right. happening and that's happening right, and like right. and they don't they don't know any of that stuff yet, you know. Yeah. And so we really just try to we try to be as honest as we can without the confusion. And how has uh, Thomas having four daughters impacted you as a husband to Lauren? I just had to sit back and like reprioritize my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. if music was number one for the last eight years, music is now, like, number three. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, I love it, and I want to be great at it. But, like, if me being great at music makes my parenting and my husband <laughs> role suffer, yeah, what's it worth when I'm 50? What's it worth? Yeah. You know what I mean? You're right. You're right. Women's basketball has been systematically held back after 49 years of Title IX. We still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. I remember interviewing you when you hadn't won an award and it was all brand new and now you're just such a staple and such a name. What what is it like now when you stand up on a stage and the stadium is full? Is it like what it was before? What does it feel like for you? 
I still pinch myself. Yeah. Um, and I'm also, I'm also a perfectionist. I think in some good ways, but mostly a fault. Um, mm-hmm. which maybe maybe leads back to my comparison issue uh-huh. because I, I I walk out there and I go, gosh, this place holds 15,000 people, but there's there's 14,900 here. <laughs> like I'm like where's the other 100 at? You know what I mean? Like but but then I walk out there and I go, golly, it feels like yesterday that I was 21 years old, yeah. you know, opening for who whoever it was. Were you competitive about everything like did you play sports when you were a kid yeah yeah so you very, always wanted to win very yeah. competitive yeah with everything that's just you're in your dna yeah like i have this weird fear of just like not not being the best I, huh. and i don't know where that comes from but it but it happens in every area of my life like i can go back and remember playing i was playing monopoly with lauren when we were 16 years old <laughs> and she's really good at math and I'm real like I just learned how to tip three years ago, um, and she beat me. And I was like, I don't want to play Monopoly Monopoly with you anymore. You're so crazy. And even with my hobbies, like when I when I get into a hobby, yeah, I go hard. Like what? Well, what? Give me a hobby. Fly fishing, hunting, oh, yeah. skiing. Yeah. Like I gotta have the best equipment. I gotta watch a million YouTubes. I gotta hire a a trainer we need to get into this what is this no this is deep in your psyche since you know, you're a kid yeah and like i think um, i'm about to go on a kind of a weird tangent mm-hmm. and i'm getting to a point i i think the reason i hate hate so bad and like mm-hmm. instagram hatred or mm-hmm. just even posting a song and someone being like this sucks yeah like that should be able to roll off my back yeah but it doesn't like it yeah. sticks with me for weeks yeah. And I go back into my sixth grade self yeah. and like I was kind of a, I won't say an outcast, but I was, uh, I just wanted to be different than everybody else. You know what I mean? Like if it was cool to play football, I wanted to start a lacrosse team. Uh-huh. If it was cool, if it was cool to listen to the Backstreet Boys, I wanted to listen to the Ramones. Uh-huh. And I was in sixth grade and me and some buddies started a punk rock band. And on the night of prom, we scheduled our first concert because we were like anti prom. You know what I mean? Probably because we didn't get asked or no one wanted to go with us. That was probably the real reason. But I remember we put these flyers up in the hallway, like come to see the high heel flip flops at whoever's house. Yeah. And there was somebody on the football team that went through the hallway and ripped all of our flyers down uh-huh. and just started shredding them in half. Uh-huh. And that was the first moment that I said, I will be better than that. I will always be a bigger person than that. I'm about to cry even talking about it, yeah. but I, I don't know if that was where my uh, desire to prove people wrong so much came into play. But I, I can I can go back in my brain and see that so vividly. And so anytime anyone does something unique or weird or different in country music, in pop music, in sports, in whatever, when someone wants to tear somebody down for something, I'm like you need to sit down, sit down, because yes. you don't know. I know we, we've been talking about life and it makes me so happy, but let me just get to your music because <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's evolving too. You were writing songs before you were singing them uh, publicly yeah. and you still had, like I was surprised at such a young age you had so much stuff to say. Like I didn't even know you lived enough life to say those things and now <laughs> they're getting deeper even yet, but I feel like you must have lived a lot of life uh, even when, when, you, when you were young. Yeah, I feel like I did. You know, like I, I mean, I think... You know, our life, every every bit of trauma in our lives shapes us in a way, you know, whether, and you get to choose for the worse or the better, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, d- divorce is not a fun thing to go through, mm-hmm. you know, as a kid. And for a long time, I didn't think it affected me until I started to become an adult and I started to pull out little bits of pieces of how mm-hmm. that did affect me. And, you know, uh, knowing Lauren and knowing certain people in our lives that had passed away way too early, like you kind of go, well, that's just life. But then you go, no, like, that sucks, that and sucks. that that affected yeah. you, you know. And yeah. I think I've always just been a really old soul. Um, mm-hmm. Like I think I've always been an overthinker and thought about my future probably way more than your average eighteen or nineteen year old kid, mm-hmm. you know. Um, mm-hmm. And so at a young age, like I really was trying to be older than my my driver's license said. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Which is a good song title. We'll write that together. Yeah, um, that's a good one. <laughs> I've always just wanted to make sure that whatever I said, I mean, I've definitely released songs that were just for fun and just for yeah, you to dance to. But for the most part, if you hand me a guitar, I, I do want to write something uh, 
meaningful, you know, and, and something that someone across the world can hear by accident and be like, man, I've, I've felt that. I felt I've, that. I've been I there. Uh-huh. I've had that heartbreak. I've had that joy, you know. Um, uh-huh. And so a lot of people ask, like, why I get so personal in my songs, and it's like really the only way I know how to do it. You know, like yeah, I, I've right. tried to write, a quote, unquote, just like a hit, you know, mm-hmm. like, oh, this mm-hmm. would sound good on the radio. And I've definitely had a few of those. But for the most mm-hmm. part, if I can write my honest truth and it be a hit, that is mm-hmm. uh, that's the mecca there, right there. So, well, uh, Thomas, I just want to say it's always such a treat to visit and talk with you. Likewise. I love your music. We're going to be just it, it's my happy place, man. <laughs> I hit Thomas Rhett Radio, Thomas, Thomas Rhett on Spotify. And um, I just can't wait to, to see you soon. Well, likewise, Hoda. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so All much right, for talking too. with me. Thanks again. Well, it's good to see you, John. It's good to be here. Um, I saw the movie last week. And? So, I don't know if I can put into words how much I loved it. And part of it is because it's a great movie on its own. And part of it is because I was going into sixth grade when the original came okay. out. And it was so formative for so many of us. Sure. I think you included. Yeah, I think I was probably around eighth grade, but yeah. Yeah. I've described the movie like this. It perfectly rides the line between the, the, the newness of it and its originality and nostalgia. It's perfect. It's got both of those things. It's a great new story. It's a continuation of the story of Maverick and all the... Iceman and all the people that we've known throughout seeing the fir- first film, and then it's this this uh, throwback again uh, to to making you feel like you were when you were in sixth grade or eighth grade or whatever it was, the eighties. And by the way, it starts with the opening credits of the movie. There's a piece of music that comes in, and I was like, it drops you right back, back into it. Yeah, you drop sure. right back in. It's incredible. So, given your experience with the movie, given the experience we all had with the movie. When they call you about this, does it blow your mind to even consider the possibility of being... I just remember thinking, like, I, if my eighth grade self could talk to my now self, both of us would not be computing that this is happening. So it was a, it was a no-brainer for me. I was just like, are you kidding? Yes, I don't know. I don't care what the, what the part is. I would be in crap service on this thing <laughs> if I could. But... You know, then I got like a cool call sign. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I, they, they put me in the wardrobe. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this is amazing. I can't believe I get to do this. Like, I'm literally on an aircraft carrier saluting Tom Cruise. Like, this is this is not happening. It was a tremendous delight to, to, to make. And, and it's, I cannot wait for people to see the film. So your cyclone, that's the call sign you're that's referring my, to. That's my, my call sign. So describe a little bit for the audience who your character is, how he fits into the story. I'm, I'm the air boss, so I'm, I'm in charge. And like most people that runs into Pete Maverick Mitchell, I don't love the way he uh, comports him, himself. But as good as they are, sir, they still have something to learn. Every morning from this day forward, you will brief us on your instructional plans in writing. And nothing will change without my express approval. Including the hard deck, sir? Especially the hard deck, Captain. It's mystifying to somebody like my character looking at this guy's career and saying, like, what's, why aren't you running things? You should be me. You should be, you know, in a leadership position. And yet here you are still a captain. That pretty much sets the stage and, and, and tells you everything you need to know about our relationship. Uh, but it was great. I mean, to be able to, to be in those scenes with Tom Cruise uh, is a, you know, it's a lifelong dream, for real. You play it well, you've got the square jaw, and you have that good vibe of, I don't like you, but I need you up there. Man. Exactly, exactly. Energy. And that's there's so much of that that's baked into not only the, the story, but just the character of, of Maverick. I mean, he's it's right there in his in his name. He's, he's the Maverick, and and you, you, you know, you, you don't like him, but you want, you need him. And, and he is exactly that and 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 as the movie plays out you see you see how uh, that comes to comes to bear fruit talking about Tom Cruise and Maverick I think part of why this works so well is because he is still Maverick 32 years since the original movie he looks great he's in shape he still carries it what was it like to be on set with him as sort of the leader I'll never forget my first day on set like I walked on to set we're at North Island Naval Base in Coronado San Diego 
I'm looking around. It's basically a temple to Top Gun. There's a two-story American flag for the set. Everybody's in, you know, gear. And I walk on the set and there's Tom Cruise and he just looks at me and he's, hey, he comes up, gives me a big hug. It's so good to have you here. We're so excited. I was like, are you kidding me? This is insane. I said to him at some point during that day, that first day, I was like, this has to be like an out of body experience for you. You are in the same wardrobe on the same set and it's 30 years later. Like what is, you were 25 or whatever he was when he was making that movie the first time. I was like, what does that feel like? He goes, I feel like I'm at home. Your reputation precedes you. I have to admit, I wasn't expecting an invitation back. They're called orders, Maverick. And he is that guy, isn't he? I mean, you've talked about him of sets the tone for the set. Here's how hard we're going to work. Here's when we're going to work. First guy in, last guy out. Everything you want him to be, he is. And he knows it. He knows he has to be. And so he, he's, he's never late. He's never in a bad mood. He's happy to be there. He's happy to make movies. He's a movie star. Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. He is the best. It's a, it's a rare thing to be like in the presence of a guy like that, that movie star energy. It's yes. Just, it's, and it's, it's infectious and it's fun and it's uh, unique. I'll say that. And a wild thing to be standing in a scene with somebody who's like poster was on the wall of yeah, your childhood. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I, you pinch yourself and it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't happen often, but boy, is it fun when it does. Ooh, the Today Show's newest fan. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Women's basketball has been systematically held back. After 49 years of Title IX, we still have work to do. In Their Court, a podcast from NBC News and NBC Sports that goes inside the issues of inequality in women's sports. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. You got to stay on solid ground for your role. Yes, I did. But my God, some of the fighter plane scenes. And Tom says we had to test all these actors and make sure they could pull eight yeah. Gs. There's no real camera trick. There's a little, of course, but like they're flying in those planes. You're seeing what you see. It's not, uh, that's no joke. That's no CGI. It's real. And those guys and girls all had to go through pretty much fighter pilot training. You know, they're in G-suits, they're experiencing G-lock, loss of consciousness. You know, basically, you're pulling so much gravity that the blood is going out of your head. It's... Literally. It's... Yeah. That's literally what happens. Yeah. Like, the... It's... And, and you see it on screen. Like, you see their faces, like, moving in, in that way. And it's... It is a... Uh, it's exciting. Your, your pulse immediately starts ramping up when you see it. And it's, uh, it's because it's real. And if you had a chance to sit and watch the watch the movie, yeah, I, I've seen the whole film. It's, and your reaction was what? 
I, I literally, I, I got misty. Yeah. You know, I, I definitely was reminded of like being that young kid watching that first one. There's, there's a couple things I won't, I won't spoil, but there's some, uh, some characters we've seen before that mm. come back, uh, and remind you that like, oh wow, that, like these characters and these relationships are, are seemingly ongoing since, you know, yeah. since we left off in 1985. Um, and then I was just blown away by the, by the storytelling and the, and how it's told the, the, the camera work and the, the, uh, action sequences are unbelievable. And I'm just happy to be a part of it a lot has changed in all of our lives but some of these things are still in place you know what i mean like, yeah for oh, sure. okay there's maverick and there's all these other characters that you're alluding to and it feels good to see yeah, it it does it, there, there's something very comfortable about that um and i think we've all had you know a very interesting last couple of years too of uncertainty and yeah. things feeling like what's what's normal what's real what's and then something like this happens this is an actual big time movie it's not a streamer it's not a this it's not a binge it's a it's a movie it's an event movie that are the kinds of things that we used to do when yeah. we were 13 14 15 years old i remember my first experience with something like that i, I certainly saw top gun at least four times in the theater because you had to yeah. you just wanted to do it again um and that's i think going to happen with this i think people are going to see this and then immediately want to see it again there's also been a little bit of the waiting game for this, building up this anticipation. Tell you me shot about this, it. I think, four years <laughs> yes, ago or something like that. In 2018. 2018. Uh, the movie was finished in 2019. It was meant to come out in 2020. Obviously, the world, you know, stopped, and we had to put a pause on it. But the, you know, the idea was this needs to be seen big and loud and on a big screen and to blow your hair back, and that's the way it's going to be seen. And I, I. I challenge anybody to to not be blown away by the film. What was the first phone call back to St. Louis like to your buddies who saw the movie with you in 86 and you said, I'm going to be in the new <laughs> Top Gun with Tom Cruise? Well, mostly I think it, it, there was an announcement in, you know, whatever in the press. So I got a lot of incoming calls <laughs> of like, is this real? Are you in this movie? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I had shot a frame, before I had been on set, before I would have costume fitting anything like what's the deal well i can't really talk about it but yeah it was pretty uh across the board you know full-blown excitement uh and i i'm still to this you know soon every time a trailer drops or anything comes out i can't wait to see this movie i can't wait to see this movie L literally i got an email from a friend of mine who was uh the younger brother of a kid i played baseball with and, and went to high school with who like bought a t-shirt he's like <laughs> ready to go <laughs> this is a grown man by yeah. the way this yeah. is a 40 year old man like, sure yeah <laughs> bought a t-shirt and is ready to go there's gonna be a lot of that you yeah. gotta get ready i know Actually, i was telling you my 12 year old son is very excited about this and uh -huh. he watched the old one have you thought about like oh this is gonna be a movie for those kids the way it was for us Just yeah this sort of extension of this for sure i mean world. It's, it's like we were talking about it's there's a quality to certain films that makes them sort of blockbusters right so there's this is one of those things this is one of those movies that it's not an academy award movie it's not a prestige movie this is a blockbuster and it's for kids of a certain age it will be memorable in a way that will be uh you know super specific but also just mind-blowing for them and i think you know it's it's hard for me to to soft pedal it. I can't. It's just, it is what it is. It's going to be awesome. And that's how it's designed. It's meant to be awesome. And uh, yeah, I can't, I just can't wait for people to see it. It's amazing how ingrained that movie, the first movie is. When I was watching it back with my son the other night, I knew every frame almost that was coming. And despite the fact I haven't seen it in years, every pull of a cigar, every line, every cut of music, just kind of becomes a part of the, the conscience. Well, yeah, Tony Scott did an amazing thing with that first film. Like every shot is sunset, yeah. everything, you know, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, you know, how is it always sunset? Right. Like, wait, <laughs> does the sun never move? No, but but just the the vocabulary of it, all the all the guys in the helmets that, yeah. are, that are doing all the things that are launching the planes and all the stuff. And, and it's, it's so redolent of that first film, this one that we did, and jokes, Kozanski, who, who directed it, 
is, again, strikes the exact balance of homage to Tony's, you know, kind of vocabulary visually and stuff. There's, there's the music cues that you mentioned, all of that stuff. And yet it's, it's so of, you know, 2020, yeah. 2021, 2022 now, uh, of the now that it has its own life and it's uh it's just great it's it's it's, awesome. uh, it's amazing they we there's a couple scenes in like the the pilot bar that they yeah. they rebuilt this they built it out of from scratch this bar it looks like it's been there for 100 years but they built it from scratch so much so that the navy was like can we keep this <laughs> <laughs> it's a good bar it's great yeah it's, right on the beach nothing, yeah nothing works yeah. There's, there's no there's no water running water or anything like, can we keep this sure <laughs> connect it up yeah <laughs> Now, how'd you avoid the beach scene, the shirtless uh, football game? Oh, I don't. Beach. Nobody wants to see that. Thank God, <laughs> I didn't have to. You, yeah, watching the watching the the young kids working out for about two two and a half yeah. weeks before that, I was like, enjoy. I'm, I'm gonna go get dinner. I'll be in my uniform. You guys, yeah, I'll be in my uniform <laughs> and sunglasses. Well, congrats, man. It's such such a good film. Thank you. People are gonna absolutely love it. Of whether you're 12 or our age or it older, is it's for awesome. all ages. It's so good. Hi, I'm Savannah Guthrie. And I'm Hoda Kotb. Do you want the top stories in news, pop culture, celebrity interviews, cooking, and more all in one place? We got the channel for you. Check out our 24-7 streaming channel today all day and make the most of your day. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. I do want to ask you about Fletch. Yes. Confess Fletch. I was doing the research and I said, is this the same Fletch as I grew up with? And the answer is yes. Yes and no. So how did this come about? It's, uh, well, Gregory McDonald wrote about 12 books uh, throughout the 70s and 80s uh, starring our man Fletch. And as you and I both know, and anybody that's grew, that grew up in the 80s knows, Chevy's uh, version of Fletch became very popular and iconic if you'll use if i can overuse that word again um and and uh, yet there are these other stories and so it's been threatened to be rebooted for years and years and years and finally um miramax who had the who had the rights said we're doing this do you want to do you want to do this and i said yes i do i really do and of course, the, the danger of in doing anything like that, rebooting anything like that, is like, okay, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to imitate right. Chevy? Like, no, you can't. Chevy's Chevy. So we had to really kind of, we approached it like a cover song. Like you think, mm. okay, well, you're not going to play it exactly the same way. You have to kind of come up with your own spin on it. And so that's what we did. And Greg Matola, who I've worked with on several projects, is a wonderful filmmaker and a good friend. And we, we decided, okay, well, we're gonna take it in a little bit of a different way. We're gonna get back to kind of the, what the books were, more of a straight kind of whodunit. 
and and really kind of lean into that and and less on the jokey wigs and teeth right. and funny voices and all that stuff which is great and but is very much of Chevy's version so we made a very cool jazzy interesting uh, more adult kind of version of it and and hopefully we'll get to make a lot more we'll see what happens so we're gonna wait to see who is going to release it um, but I'm excited for people to see that too because we, we, my, my friend John Slattery's in it with me um, uh, Kyle McLaughlin we have we've got, we've got a lot of uh, Marsha Gay Harden we've got a lot of cool people in it it's really funny and it's really fun uh, it takes it takes place in Boston and then Rome um, so it's kind of got you know it's got a little international flavor to it and we're hoping to be able to make a few more of those too I'm sure the first thing you have to do is get Chevy's version out of your head right yeah because yeah. it's there for all of us for sure yeah. for sure it's it's you know it's a different it's a different take on it so I'm, I'm hoping people get to see that as well coming up in the in the next year or so and yeah and then we'll make some more of them. I cannot wait to see that either. You're on a roll, man. I'm doing what I can. You really are. You are. <laughs> it does seem like post Mad Men, everyone's gotten to see how funny you are, which your friends have always known about you. Is that a conscious thing of like 30 Rock and Kimmy and Curb and all the... And now- I got really lucky. I'll say this because, you know, obviously doing something like Mad Men, which is so serious and so specific. Um, and I'll credit Lorne Michaels. Like he was, he was the guy who said, come do the show come do SNL, come do it three times, come do it, you know, whatever you want. Now, before I was cast as the uh, mysterious debonair Don Draper, I did a bunch of stuff. Um, for example, in the early 90s, I had a guest spot on the teen sitcom Late for Class. <laughs> I, uh, I played the new kid at school, Bonzo. Uh, I think we have a clip of it. Uh, check it out. Oh no, I forgot about the quiz. You better not cheat off me, Trevor. Hey, Bonzo, did you hear? We have a quiz in geography. Lower your voice. (laughs) Show a little respect. Panic every time there's a quiz as if it really matters. You go through life like a cockroach in the dirt. (laughs) You people make me sick. That was the person that gave me the intro to Tina Fey on 30 Rock and that was what got me Kimmy Schmidt and then you know introduced me to Larry David and and that whole world so I'm tremendously lucky to be able to play on both sides of the aisle uh and and uh and I'm yeah I'll I'll I'll, I give all credit to to Lauren Michaels for that is it fun to step into those worlds for sure and show off like you saw Don Draper, sure. you saw all that stuff, but here I am this way. Well, and getting to meet and work with people like Kristen Wiig on Bridesmaids or, or Bill Hader <laughs> on Barry or whatever, you know, it's like there's so many phenomenally talented people that come through that building, you know, uh, and, and to get a chance to, to work with them um, is is great. I was watching you in Bridesmaids this morning where you go, I really want you to leave. <laughs> Good. That was a that was a fun one. That it's was a so, fun one. It's so good. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Everybody, good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? 
What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. So Mad Men's been off the air for seven years now, I yeah, think. That's right. You've got some distance from it. Have you been able to process what a whirlwind that was well, and what an impact it had on your life? Yes, yeah, for sure. We, we just lost an all-star in Bobby Morse this week. Yeah. Working with him and kind of thinking back to what a career that that man had. And the funny thing for me is like, I see Kiernan Shipka every now and again. Mm -hmm. And she's now 22 years old. Yeah. And when I started working with her, she was six. So it's literally like, that is marking the passage of time for me. It's like, okay, this person, she's gonna get married. She's gonna have kids, like this crazy yeah. like whirlwind. I've known you since you were six. It's, you know, she played my daughter, but it feels like she is my daughter. It's very strange. But yeah, getting getting that distance from it has been fun, honestly. Like it's it's fun to look back on on that show and and be reminded of what a great thing we made. I, I got a lovely text from a, a friend of mine, Annie Clark, also known as St. Vincent, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the other day who said, I was just on an airplane and I was watching the show and yeah. it just, it was so, it's so good, it's so good. I get one of those every two, three months from somebody. And it's it's Andrew. a good reminder. Yeah, yeah we, made, we made something great. And uh, not a lot of people can say that. And it's important when you, when you, when you have done something like that to, to remember it. It's kind of, that was 2007 when it started. And people forget we hadn't been in the streaming world and all that. We had yeah. Sopranos and The Wire and a few of those shows. The show was great, but there was no guarantee it was going to take off. We know? shot the pilot in 2005, I think, or 2006. And then it was a year before we shot the second one. We didn't yeah. know if we were going to get picked up. Right. We didn't know if we were going to make a second episode. So then it, then it debuted and it was a hit. People were gaga for it, which was great. But we didn't know if we were going to get a second season. You know, it was that kind of thing. It was very... We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. AMC didn't really have a history of, of making television. Right. They weren't really sure the funding, they were trying to figure out how to finance this thing. It was not an inexpensive show to make, it was period, it took place in New York City, even though we're shooting in LA, we build all these sets. So it was very, you know, piecemeal in how it came together. And then once it finally did, and we achieved the kind of critical mass of, of, of you know, critics and all the all the other stuff okay we started winning awards okay here it is now we're emmy award winning and and all the other stuff well but okay now we're going to get another now we're going to get another mm. season mm. might not get two more seasons but we'll see and then all of a sudden it went for seven seasons and that's that's a success that very few people get to experience and and we're i'm eternally grateful for it but it's a unicorn in a lot of ways it obviously changed your career, but it changed your life, too. I remember seeing you at the 2012, one of the political conventions in, in Charlotte. And we were in the lobby of a hotel, a group of people, and someone came up and asked for a picture with you, height of Mad Men, and you turned them one person, and it was this thing. <laughs> and I went, wow, that's like a different way to go through life. It was a change. It's certainly a change. It's definitely, you think like, and politics is a perfect way to put it because I remember meeting Al Gore at one point, and he said, you know, the, the selfies have taken five years out of my life. Mm. Just because in the old days, you shake hands and move on. That's yeah. it. Maybe you get a little Purell. That's all you got to worry yeah. about. And now it's a, it's a picture, it's a this, it's a let's do. And of course, you don't want to be, you know, rude. Yeah. But there's also, you know, there's all, only so many minutes in the day. And you talk about that thing where it's like, it's one person, and then it's two people now and it's okay because three thousand got it yeah yeah and your rest of your day is in that That's lobby the rest of your day yeah but you seems to me you've sort of managed it pretty well right you've had that moment and but you live regularly you i think you know i think like you learn to prioritize everything right so yeah. everything has its compartment and like if you're if you're going into a place where you know that's part of the equation then you have to kind of dial that up and if you you can you can remove yourself from those things but if you go to Madison Square Garden you're gonna get yeah. you're gonna get mobbed that's yeah. the way it is so you know you just got to manage those expectations so what do you have on the we've got Fletch coming 
Top Gun Maverick's going to be huge. As you look at the sort of future and the horizon of your career, what's still out there that you want to do? Man, I don't know. Um, I've been so lucky. You know, I've been so fortunate to, to do, like I said, to work on both sides of the aisle, comedy and drama, work with all this, all the people that I want to work with. My, my friend John Slattery just made a movie starring me and Tina Fey. We shot that last fall. That's going to come out at some point. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just, I just like to keep my, my, my head on a swivel and my eyes open and, and be aware when those opportunities come my way that I don't miss them. Well, it's guided you pretty well. Right? So far, so Wouldn't good. You say? Yeah. Congratulations on everything. Thanks. People are going to freak out about Top I think It's I think, so good. I think, I think they're going to like it. Good to see you, man. It's good to see you. You know, for a long time, I sort of suffered in silence. And this series is trying to shine a light on these topics. There is no stigma to me. It's mine. Hi, and welcome to our Today All Day Mind Matters special. You know, this month we're celebrating mental health awareness, a very important topic for everyone, but especially young people here in America. The youth mental health crisis is all too real. So we want to celebrate the people helping to fight it and normalize those conversations. Good example, musician M. Byhold. You may have heard her song, Numb Little Bug. It's her debut single. It's everywhere. It's about M's experience with antidepressants. The earworms blow up TikTok, prompting fans to share their own mental health stories. Last year I had a song called Groundhog Day that was doing well on TikTok and all of a sudden like labels were reaching out and my dreams were coming true very quickly but at the same time I had started on antidepressants and I didn't realize that they could take the highs away as well as the lows and um, I had a conversation with my mom where I was like my dreams are coming true why am I not as happy as I expect to be and she was saying that sounds a little bit ungrateful and I was saying it's not ungrateful let me find the words for you and then basically wrote Numb Little Bug. Do you ever get the viral TikTok launched singer songwriter M. Byhold into stardom. Like your body's in the room, but you're not really there. Like you have empathy inside, but you don't really care. Like you're fresh out of love, but it's been in the air. I'm a past repair. In February, the single captured number one on Spotify's global viral 50 chart. And in April, Numb Little Bug landed M at the top of Billboard's Emerging Artist Chart. Today, the song has been streamed nearly 250 million times. Do you remember the first time a fan came up to you and said, Em, I heard your song, Numb Little Bug, and it affected me in, what did they say? During the tour, um, I had a few people come up to me and tell me that like they had tried to commit suicide last year and had, you know, kind of recovered and, and found help, but also found my music and that's the most meaningful thing I can get out of any of it. The fact that they like felt they had support through what I was writing and those are probably honestly my favorite moments from tour and I'm obviously, I'm so happy that they're still here and getting help. What is your history with mental health? Is there any from your childhood or when you look back on your, your young life, do things come to mind? Um, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety, but I also feel like a lot of people in this generation have it, <laughs> yeah. Come on. Anxiety like, society, sister. We're, we're part of it. Me too. <laughs> yes, sir. But it was getting to a point uh, during the pandemic where I was like, I had a mood tracker app and I had so many lows every day that I was like, I need to do something about this. And I had an appointment with a psychiatrist and within 15 minutes she prescribed the meds and I, I was kind of taken aback that it, you know, didn't take a longer conversation to, to do something as drastic as that, but I was willing to try. Did you think about other alternative ways to kind of deal with this as far as maybe going to therapy or whatnot? Um, I've talked to a few therapists and, and still haven't found the right person for me yet, but it is an active search. And I mean, I tried different versions of the medication and just decided that wasn't the route for me. But again, for some people it really is. It, I think it's just finding what's best for you and also making sure you talk to the people around you as well. And what role has music played in your mental health journey? Music has always been my form of therapy. It's just, it's the way that I process my emotions best. 
It's a flow state when I'm writing and there's nothing quite like it. I have it on good authority that at your concert last night, you actually have another song that's unreleased called One, Two, Three, Four, Five that also deals with the nature of mental health. Tell me about it. Yeah, um, I wrote One, Two, Three, Four, Five with a couple of friends of mine about panic attacks and using the, the counting to five method uh, to get over them. Because I've had my own experience, not to the worst extent of panic attacks, but you know, where you, you get like choked up and you can't breathe and the whole world yeah. kind of caves in on you a little bit. And Know it well. I, I have this phrase that's like dance through your depression. Like I, I think we need to sort of band together and find positive ways to describe these really tough things that are going on. My generation has a history of, and, and others, of not discussing these issues. We, we hide that. That's where that suffering in silence idea comes from, and the stigma on mental health. I mean, I love your bravery in, in the writing of the song and the recording of your personal feelings, how you do it with such courage and you're so unabashed about it and look, it's so relatable. Do you feel like your generation has a better time of discussing the topics of mental health? Oh, for sure. I mean, I remember I was making a video and I had a pill bottle in it and my parents were like, are you sure you want to show the pill bottle in this video? Because that's a sign of weakness. I mean, that's just what their generation grew up on and that makes sure. sense. But I was like, we just talk about it and we laugh about it because that's the only way to get through, I mean, in, in my mind. So I have no shame <laughs> attached. Well, I love it. What did your family say about Numb Little Bug when they heard it, the whole thing? I think the first time they were like, wow, you're really, you're really saying all that. And I was like, yeah. Um, but I think as they've seen the response and the comments and the DMs and people saying like, you know, after hearing this, I went to therapy or I talked to my family, I think they get it now. Like a numb little bug that's got to survive, that's got to survive. Access to mental health resources is another major hurdle for black and brown communities. And even just talking about the topic can still feel very taboo. So I spoke to one inspiring teacher in Los Angeles about the creative ways that he's bringing those desperately needed resources to his own community and students. Take a look. Whenever you decide to go to therapy, whatever you do, you want to know the questions to ask to find the right therapist for you. But a lot of times we don't know the questions to ask. It's the same thing finding your favorite restaurant, finding a pair of shoes that fit you gotta try if you want. For BJ Williams, mental health is a calling. So BJ, your friends and family know you as the mental health guy, huh? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm the mental health dude. <laughs> How did that happen? Uh, man, you know what? I actually started when I started going to therapy for myself, and then I started doing this work that I'm doing now, and so yeah, that gave me the moniker of the mental health guy. My initial uh, intro into therapy was actual couples therapy with a girlfriend. In, in, during that time, my older brother died by suicide. And I left that relationship and a week later got into individual therapy. Your, your friends, like what did your friends think about you going to therapy? Did you tell them? Yeah, it was great. They were very supportive. And then I found out that some of them had gone before as kids or as teens. They just never spoke right. about it. And here I am, I'm like, yo, man, I gotta go to therapy today. And all of a sudden it was, yeah, B, I went to therapy before. And I was like, well, why, how come you didn't say anything to us about it? So it kind of just opened up the, the, the conversation within, within my network. Why do you think that? Why do you think people aren't forthcoming about going to therapy? There's a stigma behind it, specifically, uh, especially, not specifically, especially in, in black and brown communities, especially amongst men. And so it's one of those things that, that are, you know, stigmatized and that we're afraid to say because, like, it's either you're crazy, you're on pills, or we write it off. But instead of writing it off, BJ kept the conversation going. As a teacher at Jefferson High School in South Central Los Angeles, he saw his students struggling with their mental health. There's nobody on this planet that doesn't have some form of struggle, right? But I'm in the underserved, you know, what would be considered a uh, poverty level community at a, at a high school that's one of the oldest high schools in LA. Um, and I know this, that the makeup of the, uh, of the school is mainly Hispanic Latina. We lack uh, resources here, you know, we lack school materials here. We lack a bunch of things. So he launched the Can I Be Vulnerable bus in March. Its first stop, Jefferson High School. So we provide the community with questions to go on the bus and interview a mental health professional. So that way, when they're ready to embark on their own journey, they at least have some knowledge on what questions to ask. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, black Americans are 20% more likely to experience mental health issues, but are less likely to receive mental health help. And more than half of Hispanic young adults with serious mental illness may not receive treatment. There is still that family stigma that the kids themselves probably recognize that their parents 
or their guardians probably are still on the, the, the stigma of you can't be crazy, we can't afford to be crazy, that's for white people, we, you know what I mean, like we don't have access, that kind of thing. I'm reading your shirt, but tell me about that. Can I be vulnerable? What's the what's the history with that? Can I be vulnerable is my mental health platform. Uh, it started off as a uh, docu series. Actually, um, I recorded about fifty plus black men, and I let just them just talk about their mental and emotional health journey with a very personal story. Can I be vulnerable? Yes, you can. Will you be vulnerable? Well, you should. Um, we did that for like a year and a half, and then it kind of evolved into some other things. Uh, we created a curriculum for high school students. What does "Can I Be Vulnerable" mean to you? <laughs> Funny. Uh, it's 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 a question and it's also a statement. So for me now, when I say "Can I Be Vulnerable," I'm probably going to say something real. Like I'm I'm going to get emotional with you. I'm going to tell you something. I want to share me with you. So when I say "Can I Be Vulnerable," that means listen up because I'm about to we're about to get into a conversation. Something that I need to hear or I want I want you to know about me. How did the bus come about? I was thinking how to further do the work. And I was like, I don't, why don't you just taco truck this thing? Why don't you just bring the people? It was a very simple concept. How about I put mental health professionals on a bus and take them to the community like the ice cream man? And that's basically where it started. <laughs> I, it was nothing profound other than that. Right. I'm thinking of Eddie Murphy, mom, throw down some money. <laughs> the ice cream man. Uh, yeah, here. like it was really just that i was like you know what mental treats for the for the kids man i think it's brilliant that's really what it was i was like yeah if i had a theme song they know it's going to be mental health coming when you were done with your event at jefferson did you hear back specifically from any students what did they tell you they liked it one <laughs> they felt it was needed two they would definitely go on a bus again but more specifically they do plan on going on a mental health journey um having somebody that looks like them was really encouraging they felt more at ease there's an important part here about cultural competent care, right? I mean, that's at the essence of this. Yes, yes. And depending on what community we go to, I'll reach out to the mental health resources in that community so that they can do the work. I just have two office spaces on a bus. Um, right. But essentially it could be resourcing where these social workers provide resources to the community on where they can act, get access to care, either free or you know sliding scale or provide something themselves. On the other end, it's uh, it's educational as well. I didn't expect the kids to get on board to and just open up, but we also had you know mental health professionals that looked like them. I had a black man, I had a black woman, I had a Hispanic woman. They spoke the language, and I think that helped tremendously. Hey, do you think that the, like this this particular generation of young people that that you work with and talk to and know, do you think this is the generation that can really help destigmatize? The mental health issue in the black community. I truly believe that the next generation looking at us do this work and will continue on and will definitely do it. Since its launch, BJ's mental wellness bus has made more stops around Southern California and Las Vegas. BJ plans on keeping those conversations and his bus rolling. And that's the thing about it. If you build it, they will get there eventually. Because I've been noticing, like, again, with my bus, people have been asking me, D, when are you coming here? When are you coming here? This is great. But I do think. The future of it is bright. I do think this can be something that can go worldwide, honestly. That is a stud right there. That's BJ Williams. He's got big plans for that bus and that community. We appreciate his time and efforts out in California. Coming up next, we're going to check back in with Ohio State's Harry Miller. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Yeah, who's this? Let's go. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. 
Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to our Mind Matters Mental Health Special. Today we're focusing on the people who are pushing the conversation forward on young people and mental health. On the surface, college football player Harry Miller seemed to have it all, but the offensive lineman struggled with his mental health behind the scenes, opening up about his football retirement on the Today Show in March. Sadly, he's not alone in his mental health struggles. We caught up with Harry to talk about how he's doing and what needs to happen now when it comes to athletes and mental health. I don't think it can just be college football because there's been so many other athletes from different sports who have shared the same thoughts. So it's all within college athletics. In recent months, a series of high profile athletes across the US dying by suicide, raising questions about what can be done to better help student athletes manage their mental health. I wish I had the foresight to diagnose what was going on. I think the worst part is when we don't talk about it. I've been in the sphere of seeing psychiatrists or mental health professionals since I was young, since I was eight years old or so. Um, but prior to the season last year, I was, in, I was in a pretty poor spot, and perhaps poor is an understatement. Harry's been on the football path since he was little. While it started off as just an after-school activity, he later found himself struggling under the pressure. I remember a coach one time during recruiting when I was a junior came up to me and talked about the NFL. I remember like in that moment, um, I don't know, you just feel sort of the, the weight of the hand you've been dealt. Some of those prophecies feel like death sentences. And you're like, there's no way out of this. Everybody thinks this is what I am and I've got nowhere to go now. Last season, he hit his breaking point. So I, I spoke with my coach, Coach Day, our head coach at Ohio State, and um, was just honest and straightforward with him. I was depressed and anxious and I had suicidal thoughts. And um, over the course of what was the season, essentially, I was, I was receiving help for that. And I think back about how could I have been so sad and have felt so awful that I, that I would have wished not to be here. So he retired from football. Harry, in March, when you said that you're gonna not play football for medical reasons and you got the courage and you actually did it, what did that feel like? Yeah, it felt awesome because um, it felt like taking a mask off. And prior to that, having to wear a mask, I gave up the stuff that was not for me to begin with. And because yeah. of that, I'm just extremely, I'm extremely grateful and it's honest and it feels, and it feels great. When you were on the Today Show and you shared your story, what was it like when you like got off TV, like what was the reaction to that? It was huge, a huge response. I had high schoolers talking about their experience. I had other college athletes talking about their experience. I had middle-aged men talking about how they wanted to take their own lives. I, I don't know, I don't know many issues um, that spread across every demographic like mental health does. Yeah. And it's our hearts, it's our souls, and it's and every single one of us. What does your mental health like toolkit look like? What works for you? Do you go to treatment? What do you do? I would say I have some some like logical backstops in my head now. I just think of all the people who love me. I think of my mother and my father, my brother, my girlfriend and my friends. For me, it feels like I, I sort of hiked forward a few miles and got the layout of the land and I'm hoping to just come back and say, like, you don't have to keep going this way. There's a better route than this. At Ohio State, Harry still trains with his teammates each morning, and the football staff has begun a suicide prevention training, which will equip them with the tools necessary for responding appropriately to someone in crisis. QPR, question, persuade, refer. It's a way to save lives. It's a way to give people hope. With the pressure of playing collegiate football lifted from his shoulders, Harry is focusing on his education. Someday, he wants to be a Rhodes Scholar. 
and he's enjoying his hobbies, from reading classic works of literature to playing guitar. If I'm sad, there's a sad song to play, and if I'm happy, there's a happy song to play. And um, I don't have to put it into words, and it's, it's, it's already there. For anybody who stumbles upon this and, um, and watches it and is struggling with their own demons, what do you say to somebody like that? There is nothing so absolute as, as suicide. And I remember I was talking to my friend um, when I was in a bad, a bad way. And um, he just said, give it another day. And um, that became a sort of motto of ours to just give it another day. What a great guy and such an inspiration. Appreciate Harry. Coming up next on Mind Matters, we're gonna show you two different apps trying to help teens' mental health. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. So today on Mind Matters, we're shining a light on the people working to solve the youth mental health crisis and eliminate the stigma around discussing the topic. Now, part of that battle includes, of course, meeting young people where they are, where they frequently are. And where's that? Yeah, their phones. So we wanted to highlight two apps that are helping out. Every teen should have Teen Talk. After school, 16-year-old Lana Garrido logs into Teen Talk and gets to work. It's kind of an outreach app where like teens can use it as like a resource whenever like they're in a crisis or like they need someone to talk to. On the app, teens can anonymously post about what's bothering them, whether it's mental health or relationship problems or issues with friends. From there, Lana and hundreds of other teens work as teen advisors, trained to respond empathetically and offer resources and coping techniques peer to peer. Teen advisors receive 50 hours of training and are supported by licensed mental health professionals who can step in if a user is in crisis. 17-year-old Serena Guerrero has been a Teen Talk advisor since 2020. There's a shared understanding of what high school is like. There's a shared understanding of how friend groups can be. And that's something that I don't think that you can always get from an adult, no matter how much you trust them. The app is offered through the Jewish Big Brothers Big Sisters of Los Angeles organization. Teen Talk app was started four years ago in response to a growing need that we saw for teens to receive mental health support. 
And to date, we've reached over 40,000 teens in the last four years. At the start of the pandemic, the surging number of new users crashed the app, which had to be rebuilt to accommodate its new user base. We've also seen that for a lot of teens, just having a conversation with a peer about what they're going through can be a protective factor that allows them not to go down a path of more mental health challenges, more anxiety, more depression, that it actually prevents that. And that mental health support and validation can go both ways. What made me want to join Teen Talk was it was a personal experience. Um, I struggled with an eating disorder myself. And I feel like through my journey with mental health, I kind of wanted to be that person I wish I had when I was struggling. I feel like I was able to relate with other kind of teens who are going through like similar things. Sometimes it's not even about eating disorders. It could be something about like body dysmorphia or like kind of body related issues. And I feel like that definitely kind of helped me heal from that experience. So one of the lessons that we go over in training and in our continued education classes are dealing with people who struggle to come out as part of the LGBTQ community. The way Teen Talk was just able to make that feel so normal, it really empowered me to come out to um, friends and family. Um, and I, I didn't know at the time how much hiding that part of, hiding that part of myself um, was affecting me until I was able to come out. The app wants to break multiple stigmas around getting mental health help and show that sometimes being on your phone is a good thing. The reality is that teens have a smartphone, they're on their phone, and they're on social media. And we want to make sure that Teen Talk app is what they're accessing because it's safe and it's really a good resource for them. Social media does have a bad reputation and I see it on our app. I see teens coming to us about being very insecure about the way they look because they see all these photoshopped models on Instagram, TikTok. However, Teen Talk, you don't see anyone. There's no talk about what makeup brands to use. On the app, you come on and you see other teens posting about things that they're struggling with. That urge to strip away all the gloss and Photoshop on our feeds, powering another app called Be Real. Once a day, at a random time, users get a notification that simply says, time to be real. At that moment, you've got two minutes to snap a pic. Your phone's front camera captures what you're doing, no matter how mundane while the rear-facing camera captures a selfie of you. It's really like just a snippet in someone's life. It's just a snapshot. Maybe I just got out of the shower or like I'm in the middle of working out or something. You know, nobody's photo is gonna be of them in like full glam, you know, like looking their best. You, I think it's sort of an unspoken rule that we're all gonna do it and be, you know, our just like natural selves. Even though the app launched in early 2020, it really skyrocketed this year growing 315% since January 1st, according to Aptopia. For college sophomore Juliana Cofferella, she says it's a way to share a more real part of her life with close friends, like when she got a notification during her aunt's funeral. So I like quickly snapped just like a picture of like just my eyes up um, and they were like really puffy from crying at a funeral. But you know, those are things at like slightly more vulnerable moments. Be Real is marketed as an alternative to addictive social networks. It won't make you famous, the company bluntly states. If you want to become an influencer, you can stay on TikTok and Instagram. It's definitely not as draining on your mental health. You know, it's not these like curated images from celebrities or influencers or anything. Like it's really just your friends um, that, you know, you're not getting that sort of outside pressure to be something that you're not. Two apps trying to foster better mental health for teens. Hopefully both of those great apps will inspire more just like them. That's going to do it for our Mind Matters special. We certainly hope that these stories inspire you to please keep the conversation going with your loved ones. To find trusted mental health resources, that's a hard thing to do. If you're looking for those resources near you, we encourage you to visit Project Healthy Minds. I'm on the board. They're doing some great work, and they can help you hook up with those resources. You can find more information at today.com slash mindmatters. We appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by.
At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Came again, Craig. They did. They showed up like they do today all day, the best day of the week, guys. It's Friday. Craig's with us. Savannah is on assignment. Yes, uh, always, always happy to join our favorite streaming show today in 30. We've got a lot to bring you this morning, including President Biden's emotional plea for tougher gun laws amid the startling rise in mass shootings across this country. We're going to have a full report from Kristen Welk at the White House. Indeed. Also ahead, our favorite story of the day. This was historic. It was a tiebreaker at the National Spelling Bee, and the winner... Her name is 14-year-old Harini Logan. She joined us live to celebrate. We're going to share that conversation. Pretty impressive you. young lady from uh, from Texas. Hody, you also had something interesting in our mm -hmm. fourth hour. Susie Welch answering questions from the class of 2020. I love this because you always wonder, what do I do when I graduate? Yeah. How do I get a job? How do I find my purpose? Well, she's got great advice on resumes, interviewing, conquering the job market post-graduation. And I think it's not just for young adults, it's also for the parents. I think everyone's going to take away from Susie. So shall we get started? Let's do it. It's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. We've got it all covered. We're going to start with NBC's Kristen Welker, who's at the White House. Hey, Kristen, good morning. Hi, Hoda, good morning to you. You could hear the anger in the president's voice as he called on Congress to pass new gun laws. To make his case, the president cited data from the CDC, which shows guns are now the number one killer of children nationwide. He urged lawmakers to meet the moment and called Republican opposition to new laws, quote, unconscionable, warning inaction now will cost lawmakers at the ballot box. With the country still reeling from the mass shootings in Buffalo, Uvalde and Tulsa, President Biden made an impassioned plea to Congress overnight. Pass new gun restrictions now. For God's sake, how much more carnage are we willing to accept? How many more innocent American lives must be taken before we say enough? Enough. The president, who recently visited two of those grieving communities, drawing from the moment mourners in Uvalde begged him. They had one message for all of us. Do something. Just do something. For God's sake, do something. The president laid out his agenda against the glimmering lights of 56 candles, each representing a U.S. state or territory, reflecting his view this is a national emergency. The president calling on Congress to reinstate the assault weapons ban, which expired in 2004. But acknowledging the slim chances of that, Mr. Biden said at the very least, lawmakers should raise the minimum age to purchase an assault weapon from 18 to 21. He also urged Congress to expand background checks and impose red flag laws, which would allow law enforcement to take weapons away from anyone deemed a threat to themselves or others. This isn't about taking to anyone's rights. It's about protecting our freedom to go to school, to a grocery store, to a church without being shot and killed. The House is expected to vote on a package of new gun laws next week, but many Republican lawmakers still objecting to the reforms. These leftists want to take those firearms away so that people are defenseless to defend their families. And a House hearing earlier in the day highlighted the deep divides that remain when Florida Republican Greg Stubbe appearing remotely displayed his own gun collection. Here's a seven round magazine, which would be less than what would be lawful under this bill if this bill were to become law. It doesn't fit. So this gun would be banned. I hope the gun, the gun is not loaded. 
I'm at my house. I can do whatever I want with my guns. Really heated moment there. Well, the president also called on lawmakers to address the mental health crisis. That's something that Republicans say is at the root of the issue. So where do these talks stand? Well, there is a small bipartisan group of senators who've been quietly negotiating gun reforms. And while both sides have expressed measured optimism, the reality is there's still deep skepticism. There will be sweeping changes. However, there may be, and I want to stress this, may be some common ground on areas like red flag laws, and background checks, but it's very uphill. Hoda. Yeah, hopefully they can get something done. All right, Kristen Welker for us there in Washington. Kristen, thank you. After the opening day wrapped up with the Queen lighting a symbolic chain of lights from a Windsor Castle home to Buckingham Palace, day two kicked off this morning with a special service of Thanksgiving. Of course, the royal family was there, including Harry and Meghan, but the guest of honor making a reluctant game time decision to skip that service at famed St. Paul's Cathedral. NBC's Kelly Cobiea is there. Hey, Kelly, good morning. Hi, good morning to you guys. Yes, that's right. The Queen did not make it this morning. She would have had to navigate those grand steps leading up into the cathedral and the long walk uh, down the cathedral inside, all while in front of the cameras. So instead, she decided to stay home in Windsor, watch the church service on TV while her family put on a united front. This morning, the royal family gathering for the Jubilee's service of Thanksgiving, going ahead without the Queen. The monarch is resting in Windsor after experiencing discomfort on the first day of celebrations. Prince Charles stepping in one more time, leading tributes at London's St. Paul's Cathedral, joining in hymns and prayers, a show of unity for their frail Queen. Harry and Meghan making their first formal appearance back from the U.S. after two years. The Duke and Duchess kept a low profile on the first day of celebrations, watching the parade from a window with the Queen's grandchildren and great-grandchildren. It was a once-in-a-lifetime moment, and the children continued to steal the show Thursday, especially William and Kate's youngest, four-year-old Prince Louis, expressing his amazement and displeasure during the military flyover and chatting with his great-grandmother as she joined her family on that famous balcony, waving to a sea of people, the crowds cheering their queen. Just brought out tears. It's just, it's something you have to be here to experience. The next generation on full display throughout the day. There were so many other members of the royal family that were put in the spotlight, and I believe that was completely deliberate to showcase them and to reassure the public that there will be continuity. Prince Charles on horseback, leading the birthday salute for his mother, bringing the parade to her as she watched from the palace's balcony instead. William and Princess Anne riding behind the future king, Camilla and Kate, and the children waving from the carriage. Kate later taking a prime place next to the queen on the balcony. And just maybe a glimpse into the future, a surprising this, personal touch from Prince Charles and Camilla, spotted shaking hands with royal fans after the parade. How was it? Did you enjoy it? The Queen was all smiles back at Windsor as she lit the first of more than 1,500 beacons around the world. And at the service this morning, the Archbishop of York said of the Queen, Your Majesty, we're sorry you're not with us this morning in person, but you're still in the saddle, and we're looking for uh, much more to come. And there is more to come this Jubilee weekend. There's a big concert tomorrow, a horse race, a parade on Sunday, as well as street parties. And whether or not we see the Queen, that's still an open question. Those decisions will be made sort of on a day-by-day, -day, almost hour-by-hour -hour basis. Hoda? All right, Kelly, I hope you you enjoy yourself there too. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? We're back with an evening of historic <clears throat> drama at the finale of the Scripps National yeah. Spelling Bee. This was incredible. For the first time in 94 years, it was decided by a tie-breaking spell-off. Yeah, when all was said and done, 14-year-old Harini Logan, she's an eighth grader from Texas, she reigned supreme. How happy wow. are we? Harini is here. Wow. Go, Harini! Go, Harini, you're back. All right, the 2022 Scripps National Spelling Bee champ. Congratulations. I mean, we are all struck by your poise. I think that there you were, the eyes of everybody sort of on you. How is it that you manage through all of that to stay so calm and cool, Harini? Thank you. I think the way I manage to stay calm is to really remove myself from the situation, from like stop thinking about everybody who's watching or the media or like the possibility of the bell and just really focus on the word and the three judges in front of me and just put all of my attention on the word and getting it correct. I think that's how I kept my composure. Oh, really? how, how, do you, how do you train yeah. for, for the national spelling yeah. bee? How do you go about doing that? Training for the bee definitely requires a lot of hard work, commitment, and dedication. So it's a lot of effort that goes into it. So do you just look at the dictionary? Like, how do you, how do you go about it? I don't know any of those words. I think, uh, like, a common misconception about studying for spelling bees is that you just have a lot of words and you just start memorizing them. Yeah. But I think, as a speller, personally, that it really, each and every word, you need to really understand it to be able to spell it. So I think it's really, it's often not just looking straight at the dictionary, but rather at trouble spots or particular languages. And that's really what it consists wow. of. Harini, what yeah. I wanted to know is, I mean, mm. a lot of people got knocked out during the, the word meaning. I didn't even yeah. know you had to know the meanings of the words. Yeah. How difficult was that? <laughs> So the word meaning rounds, um, this was, it. they were inaugurated last year, so they're fairly new to the B. And I think the format was going pretty smoothly. And in my opinion, difficulty is more of a construct. So wow. for example, if you know one word that another speller doesn't, then it's difficult for them and not for you. But if you don't know a word but the other speller does, then it's difficult for you but not for them. So in my opinion, each person has their own strengths and weaknesses as a speller. So that I really think the book Hab Brown sort of played into that. Yeah. So Harini, we know that you won as, as part of this championship $50,000. Um, you know, I'm listening to you. You, you just sound so brilliant. <laughs> what, what are you going to use that money? Are you, are you going to use it towards college? Are you going to go to Disney World and ball out? Like, what, what exactly are you going to do? <laughs> I'm definitely going to save it towards college, but I do, I have an interest in investing in the stock market, so I'll probably put a bit aside for that. And I definitely want to give back to the community, not just the spelling community, but also my hometown of San Antonio and the larger community. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to use some of that to give back. Harini, uh, it's Carson. Congratulations on winning. That's fantastic. I just want to know how you and your family celebrated you. after you won, and then also did it include filling that trophy with like a milkshake or a root beer <laughs> float and drinking out of the trophy? <laughs> No, actually, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> but it was, I think it was really surreal. I think my brother, my six-year-old brother, he was probably the most um, excited out of all of us. He made, like, posters and everything. Aww. And I think, to us, celebration was just, 
like taking a second to just like let it sink in that yeah. while like so many yeah. years of hard work and continuous effort has really culminated at this point. And so that's real really quick, congratulations. real quick, Carson loves Carson loves Wordle. Are you? Do you like Wordle, or oh, yeah. is that is that just for? Today's hard. Yeah, that's beneath her. That's beneath you. No, yeah, I actually really do enjoy Wordle. Like sometimes at school, I'll do it with my classmates, and yeah, I'm getting I'm getting better. <laughs> it's an acquired skill. Wow. Whoa. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, congratulations, Harini. Harini, Harini is going. human. Yeah. 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 Howdy, Harini. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks yes. for joining. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. She won't need to celebrate. Receive any fifty thousand for college. She's yeah. getting a full ride somewhere. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. So just invest in those index yeah. funds. Yeah. It's, yeah. A good, it's a construct, by the way. Difficulty is a construct. Wow. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. <laughs> For more than a decade, American Ninja Warrior has kept us on the edge of our seats with nail-biting action and heartwarming stories. Well, next week, the show returns for, wow, its 14th yeah. season. And with a million-dollar prize on the line, the competition is stiff. That's so different when you're just going out there to have fun. And she is in disbelief. Yeah, yeah, yeah go get yours. <laughs> go get yours. Get All yours. right. How Try professional are we? <laughs> They're so professional. American get Ninja yours. Warrior host Matt Eisman, Akbar Bajamilia, and Zuri Hall. Good hey. morning to all. Good, good morning, morning, guys. Good to be good here. To see you. Hey guys. All right, so Matt, we're going to start with you. Uh, the 14 years, 14 ah. seasons. Yeah. When this started, did you have any idea 14 seasons later we'd be still talking? So I came on in season two, and literally I remember my agent going, listen, there are 10 episodes. We hope five get on air. Like, wow. <laughs> there, was, there was zero idea of what this would grow into, and now it's more than a TV show. We have gyms. There, sure. there are gyms. There are three gyms within less than an hour of us right here. Yeah, that means all it's of you sport. guys can train. Yeah. Yeah. No excuses. Right. Getting that right. salmon ladder. You know, you can't be overstated how American Ninja Warrior has changed the game, if you will. I mean, I go to the playground and my boys are, let's be American Ninja Warriors. I mean, you have kids doing it. You have adults doing it. You've been doing this, Akbar, now. This is your 10th season as yes, host. Yes, how do you yeah. even prepare? I mean, the bar now is so high. Well, it is hard, um, <clears throat> especially, you know, you think about 10 years, how do you try to, you know, try to reinvent and one of the things, don't don't judge me, okay? I'm don't judge me, all right? Okay. <laughs> as, as, as I've gotten older in the okay. game, you know, a lot of my references used to be from the 80s and 90s, and Matt will call me out on it. And so I took Because I get that. I'm old enough that I get it. So I start trying to listen to a lot of rap music. Oh, boy. Prior, so I can pick up on so the new lingo. So you can say something hip? Yeah. So <laughs> 
Yes, you like it. to say yes, that. So, yes. so I'm going to go on TikTok and the show so I can yes. hear some what kids, are the kids say something. Say? Yes, yeah. Yeah. what are they saying so I can say something like, oh, this is busting. Oh, my God. Oh. No cap. Oh, those kids who say that are now 40. That's right. That's right. No cap, Akbar's. Yes. yes. Oh, God. Yes, no oh. cap. Oh. Yeah, and no I'm just cap. down on the sideline like, please, please ever stop. stop. Oh. Guys, please stop. Stand down. So, Zuri, this is your fourth season. This is. I'm not a rookie anymore, which feels good when I first joined the team. I was so excited. Excited, but there's like its own lingo, right? Salmon ladder, switch grips, laches. Yeah. And I'm like, what is happening? Who, what, when, where, why? So to now feel like I'm very much a part of the family and they've been so gracious and welcoming into it, it feels good. The, yeah. the athletes know they made it if they go, I got a Zuri interview. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Made it. Yes. Yes. I'm honored to be a part of it. You know, sometimes when they're coming to me, the runs didn't go so well. And yeah. I'm like, good God, help me get through this. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes I'm there to celebrate with them. We cry happy tears, sad tears, right. all the tears. It's special. This, this season, you guys have dropped the age limit from 19 to 15. Wow. Uh, why'd they make that decision? Just to make you guys feel older? <laughs> well, no, no, I, I, I That's think... That's your job, Al. <laughs> Thanks. Hey. I, I think it's to push the veterans. I, I think wow. we've seen that, like, when the NBA dropped the, the age requirement to 18 and it changed, you know, professional sports or uh, the NBA. And I think bringing the 15-year-olds into Ninja Warrior has really changed and elevated the game. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. You guys have such great chemistry. Is there anything we don't know about you guys, or is there anything you don't know about each other still? You can't have chocolate if this man is around. If oh, you, He's like a Hoover right. vacuum like cleaner. chocolate? <laughs> Rolos and Twix and Reese's. I'm like, Rolos? I know, he's still got a six-pack. It's rude. You know, I, I, do, I do like eating a lot of sweets, but I just yeah. found something out yesterday. So yesterday, Zuri just celebrated her birthday. Okay, happy yeah. birthday. Yeah. I found out from her friends at the birthday party mm -hmm. that she was in a singing group. Yep. Oh, my God. Why what? would you say that on national television? Wait, what? Like, oh, my God. She's about to do a number God. for all of us right now. <laughs> I, I, oh What's my her name? God. What was her name? I cannot name? believe you. <laughs> I will not tell you because someone will Can Google you it. And are you on YouTube? I used to sing. I, I wrote a letter to YouTube, to MySpace. Like, can y'all please take all these videos down? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so that, that was a past life. We're going right now. Have fun. If you guys find it, it was meant to be found. Now you've got to come back and perform. Okay, only if I get my guys I'll with you. I'll be a backup. They'll do backup. Yeah, I'll be, yeah, 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 we'll be, we'll, now, we'll be, we're, now we're rescinding the invitation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just you. Okay. I'll Not the backup. Jury, I know these guys have done the course. Have yeah. you tried it? I have oh. not. I have yeah. not. I like wow. to learn from other people's lessons. <laughs> Matt, what happened the last time you ran the course? Why are you throwing it on me? <laughs> it it didn't end well. I broke my foot and broke my ankle. Ooh, but that's well, not well, true. I, I ran the course. So Akbar, a good Akbar hit a buzzer, yeah, which is I very impressive. You're also a former pro athlete. That's You're an NFL yeah, player. Yeah, but you know, I mean, that didn't. I mean, that was a long time ago. I mean, yeah. you can still run it. You can I run might, it. I might hit the shrinking steps one day. Way, you know, the first obstacle. the least athletic moment of your run to put on there. <laughs> you like swing it around. We know what we're doing. We know what we're doing. Maybe we should do a buddy up. Go out to. Of uh, course. Like, It'll you know. be our last one. Like, you. like seriously. Yeah. yeah. That's the way. You for 40 years of doing this. I mean, that right there is the way to celebrate, right mm -hmm. there. Or, or end my career. <laughs> you know, remember together. that time? Remember how oh, Roker did the course? <laughs> he he took him out in the body. Good. We yeah. always enjoy you guys. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations for having us. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Thank you. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel fun? About the time I stopped the plane, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. 
Okay, it's graduation season, and after a well-deserved celebration, the class of 2022 will be heading into the real world, sending out resumes, interviewing for jobs, and building careers. It can be stressful, but it's also exciting, and it could set the course for the rest of your life, so no pressure. <laughs> All right, here was some advice for college grads as best-selling author and career expert Susie Welch. So, Hi. Susie, this is the time you're handed the diploma, uh, yeah. and you're about to step out into the re real world. Yeah. So, first pieces of advice as someone embarks on that journey. Okay, don't get hung up up on what your first job is, okay? There's there's this huge weight inside you. The first job's got to be perfect. Your first job is a really good story at a cocktail party in around 20 years, okay? This was your yeah. first job. This is what I learned. I got out of there pretty fast. Your career is going to zig and it's going to zag and there's going to be wrong turns, ups and downs. You really have this period of discovery. What am I really good at? What do I love doing? Not always the same thing, okay? And what does the world need? That's what you're doing. Let me ask a question. Let's yeah. say you know you want to be in the record business. Mm -hmm. Should, are you better off taking some menial mailroom job in a place like that that doesn't pay well and doesn't give you good benefits? Yeah. Or are you better off getting another job? Because I always think, like, mm. if you get in the arena, yeah. at least you're there. But what do you think? I, a menial job in an industry that you really love. You know, you'll learn some stuff. I think what you're in the business of doing those first couple of years out is getting skills mm. and relationships. You know, you sort of think, oh, in the record business, what skills do you need? Well, I need to have a good ear to yeah. know who's the right artist. I mean, that Maybe will you do that in the mail room? Will you do that in a menial job? Um, will you meet the right people? Maybe yes, maybe no. But uh -huh. the thing is, get over yourself, right? Yeah. That first job is just your first just job. job yeah. Get the best job you yeah. can get and get the career yeah. going. Do not have paralysis. We have some questions, but first, yeah. really quickly, these are all students, you know? Yeah. Everybody's been studying for their career. You say set your own syllabus, yeah. which I love. Well, this is a story. When you're in college, the professor gives you um, a syllabus and he gives you, oh, here's when the tests are. This is the assignment. This is what you have to do to get an A. You graduate, none of that's there yeah, anymore. Right. There's no structure. There's no what's what's an A. And you have to put the structure into your life. I mean, even writing down, you know, this is what success looks like for me. This is what my values are. You have to be your own professor what and the student. What if you don't know what you want to do when yeah. you get out of so school? Many, you really don't know. Yeah. So many people don't. It's okay. But you, ha you have to understand that the first five years, you've got to come to start figuring it out. What are my yeah. values? There's all sorts of ways okay. to do that. I mean, even go online and type in, how do I find out my values? Mm -hmm. There's there's tools. All right. So here we have one viewer question. The first one is from Grace. Hi, my name is Grace. I just graduated from college last week. I was wondering what are some good questions to ask at the end of an interview? Smart. Mm -hmm. Good I questions think. to ask. Because yeah, they always say, do you have any questions? I know. And you yeah. sit there like, And that by uh -huh. the time, that time they've answered every question you've ever had in your entire life. And yeah. you're like, oh, 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 you have no idea. So look, what I like to ask is, what does success look like at this company? If I'm a top performer, what, what will have I done? Like? I mean, that shows them that you're thinking about success. You know, I like to say, um, in six months, if you've made the right hire, what, you know, how will you know? What will you say to a coworker that I'm doing? And ask, you know, That's ask good. about success. And you can ask straight out about the company's values. They've probably told you. Yeah. But you could say, you know, uh, what values do you want your employees to really embrace and demonstrate? Those Show two that questions are good. I love those. Those are really good. All right. Um, what's our, we have another question from Suzette. Are there any suggestions that you can give a 21-year-old college graduate on how to best balance their work life with their personal life? Such a good question. She's asking for her, her son. son. Yeah. Yeah. You know, look, it's really good to be asking when you've just graduated because usually, you know, when we think about work-life balance, when we're in a crisis, we get yeah. a parent who got sick. Um, suddenly, we're working a lot of hours, and our kids are telling us, "Mom, not so much." So to think about it early on is good. But my thing is, if you're 21 and you're healthy, go work hard and play hard and figure out. What matters to you? Hey, do these relationships out of work matter more to me than professional success? Or am I going to work really, really hard? Because actually, I want to be professionally successful and I want to make this much money. So this is the time to figure out what you want your work-life balance like to be. I like people who are wildly successful, and maybe I'm wrong, at least in their profession or whatever, have an imbalance. Oh, because, yes. Yeah. I mean, that's yes. kind of a choice that you make. Yes. It's like, I want to be really, really good at that. So yes. some, and I maybe know. you change your priorities as you go through life, and but you in will. the beginning, you, yes. kinda, yeah. you sort of have to I dive in. I don't think there's work-life balance. I think there's work-life consequences. Yeah. Okay, so you, and work-life choices. choices. You make a choice about work, and it's going to have life consequences. Yeah. So, and, and that's that's okay. Like, my life is kind of wildly imbalanced because yeah. I really yeah. love work. I, and I also yeah. think yeah. being imbalanced yeah. is something that we should embrace. Yeah. So it's more like trying to think about what will make you happy yes. and fulfill you. Right. That's exactly. Right. That's it. important it's, to know that. It you is. Know? That All is. right. We have our last question is from Carly. She recently graduated from law school. During an interview, you want to stand out and be viewed favorably by your potential employer. But at the same time, you want to figure out whether or not this specific opportunity is right for you. 
How do you go about asking those important questions surrounding salary, benefits, and retirement without appearing presumptuous to the interviewer? Sticky, Whoa. sticky, yeah, sticky. That's How much am I going to make? Question. Look, a good employer will talk to you about salary benefits right up front to make sure you're oh, on the well. same page. Oh. Yeah, that's that's the new world. It used to be not that way because, but so now they come out and say this is what the job say, pays. Well, right. Right. Yes. Now it's happening more and more, and a good company will do it, but. It's not that. It doesn't happen often enough. And so you're in this funny position. You're saying, I want this job. I really like them. I have no idea what this pays. I would not do this on the first interview, okay? It yeah. still, um, so wait. It yeah. still yeah. looks Second. bad. It's a red flag if you're asking about money. Second interview, if it hasn't come up, say, look, I really love this company and this job is so exciting. Um, and it would be an honor to continue in this process, not get this job, continue in this process. Can we talk a little bit about salary expectations? I would not ever it, ask about a, benefits. This, but by the way, just that. Yeah. Salary. Salary expectation, not salary. Right, yeah. Salary right, right, expectation. Right. Got careful with the language. Susie, yeah. you're so good. So good. Oh, don't forget to tune in next week. We're packed. We're ooh, packed with ooh. stars. We got Melissa McCarthy, wow. Laura Dern, yeah. Jeff Goldblum, huh. just to name a few. All right, can't wait. Until then, though, have a great weekend, y'all. Say there today all day. Are you looking to ditch some dairy? Well, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Samadata remaking two classically creamy dishes without the cream. First up, she's going to make a vegan mac and cheese with a velvety sauce. Then for dessert, Sama turns overripe bananas into a luscious, dairy-free, nice cream. Can you imagine if they started making, like, onion-scented candles? That would be such a crazy choice. I'd probably buy one. If you can't eat dairy, then don't worry, I got you. I'm always coming up with new ways to make creative, delicious dips, fillings, and desserts without any of the dairy. I really just want to hashtag make dairy free cool. I'm going to show you how to make two of my favorite recipes that are traditionally loaded with lots of cheese and milk. First up, a masala mac and cheese, and next, because we can never forget dessert, my banana cardamom ice cream. One of the first ways that I dabbled into cooking, and maybe it's a bit generous to say cooking, was through box mac and cheese. I used to love that mildly suspect bright orange powder. But today, we are making my masala mac and cheese. The flavor profile is a little bit more elevated, but still just as creamy and decadent. Let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is dice up my onion. So I wanted to add some cooked onions into the sauce because I think it adds a lot more flavor. We want different levels of flavor and spice, and by cooking these onions down in some olive oil, it's really gonna get us there. I'm gonna peel this guy. I am just dicing my onion right there. Little rough, don't worry, because we are going to blend it later. After it's been cooked, of course. I've just diced my onions, and now I'm just gonna heat up some olive oil on my pan. Okay, my olive oil is shimmering. Time to add my onions. I also want to make sure I'm seasoning my onions with some salt and pepper. A little salt. And some freshly ground black pepper. Okay, these onions look delicious. They look nice and golden brown. I'm gonna turn my stove off, set these aside to cool, and get to work on my creamy sauce. Before we get going on my sauce, I have to tell you about cashews. When you soak cashews, they absorb a lot of that water, expanding them and making them a lot easier to blend. Because they're so buttery, when you actually do blend them after they've been soaked, they can create creamy dips, dressing, sauces, desserts, mac and cheese sauce, anything, you name it. But if you skip soaking them, and please don't, you'll get a really crumbly and mealy sauce, and that's just not cute. It's really important that you soak your cashews for at least 24 hours overnight, or you can flash soak them for an hour in hot water. Best part about this mac and cheese is it comes together in this blender. What could be better? Mac and cheese in a blender? I'm on board. We're gonna add our cashews into our blender. Make sure when you're making this recipe that you only use raw cashews. No salt on it, no roasting. 
Because I want a little bit of a sweet taste and I want that nice orange color for this mac and cheese, I'm using a roasted sweet potato. I'm just gonna peel the skin off with my hands. By the way, if you're worried that I'm handling a hot potato, I'm not. This has been cool. Don't worry about me. I'm okay. I'm just gonna take about half of this, pop it in my blender. You thought I forgot about my onions? You were wrong. They're going straight in here. Now to get that really delicious, cheesy, savory flavor, I'm using some nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is a really common vegan cheese replacement. Adding this straight in my blender. It adds a bit of umami as well. Now for my spices. This is a masala mac and cheese after all. Got some cumin. Adding a bit of cayenne. Cayenne gives me that heat. I want a little bit of spice in this masala mac. I'm gonna add some turmeric. Turmeric is not only delicious, but it also adds that really gorgeous yellow color that we're chasing for this mac and cheese. And finally, we've got some garlic powder. To help everything blend together, I've got some vegetable broth. Veggie broth is also a bit better than adding something like water because it's got a little bit more flavor in there. Okay, are you ready to blend? Okay, let's do it. And if you need to, feel free to scrape down the sides of the blender to get everything well incorporated. Boom, I'm add a little bit more salt, a little more pepper. Back to blending we go. Okay, I'm really pleased to announce that my mac and cheese sauce is done. Looks amazing. Time to make our pasta. Got my cute little elbows here. My water is boiling. Don't forget, please, please don't forget to salt your pasta water, okay? I'm gonna do that right now. Pasta water is salted. It's time for our pasta. So I am using elbows here for my little cute pasta shape. I wanted to get that very iconic mac and cheese vibe, but you can totally use whatever short pasta works for you. A shell would be nice here, penne would be nice here. Okay, so I'm just gonna fish for a piece, see how we're doing on doneness. This is the best way to check. Just pinch it with your fingers or just bite into it. Perfect. Our pasta is ready. Time to drain. Don't drop the sama. <laughs> Don't drop it. One more thing to do is just add our sauce to our pasta. I'm gonna add this into my bowl. I'm really excited about this sauce. Just so you know, this makes a lot of sauce. I like a saucy mac, but you can totally reserve some for later if you want it to be a little less saucy. All right. Time to plate. <sighs> Sorry, I just gasped. I was just taken aback. It's so creamy. All right, little fresh parsley just to top. Little bit of color, little bit of green, little bit of herb, just to bring this out. And then I'm just gonna finish it with some freshly ground black pepper. Have you ever seen a more velvety mac and cheese? I just have to capture this. Here I go. <gasps> this is gonna be an action shot. Okay, I think I got it. Time for me to dig in. I've never been more happy than this moment right now. <laughs> there's so much flavor going on and it's so creamy. You would not believe there's no dairy in this. I'm not telling you to throw away your box mac and cheese, but um, I'm definitely telling you to give this a try. You will not regret it. Mm. So good. It's me, and I can never have any dinner or lunch without a little bit of dessert. So up next, I've got my banana cardamom ice cream, and you're absolutely gonna love it. I'm gonna grab the ingredients. Welcome to today. We have a lot to get to this morning, guys. Did you feel foam? 
About the time I stopped playing, that's when it hit me. One of the biggest names in music. Give it up for Harry Styles. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. At 73, Prince Charles is still waiting for the job that is his birthright. Do we want Charles? Do we want a monarchy? I'm Keir Simmons, and we'll take on these questions and more in our new podcast, Born to Rule. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. If you thought that you needed an ice cream maker to make ice cream at home, then think again. My banana cardamom ice cream comes together in a blender and takes a little nice nap in the freezer to create the most luscious vegan ice cream. Let's make it. Listen closely. I hate wasting bananas. It's so sad. Ripe bananas, really spotty bananas, are perfect for so many different types of recipes, and especially this ice cream. They help create that really luscious, creamy texture without any of the dairy. I've got my frozen bananas here. I'm just gonna pop them into my blender. When I freeze bananas, I like to cut them up in little pieces just to make it easier to blend. Really important that you're using ripe frozen bananas because we're not actually gonna add any added sugar to this recipe. All the sweetness is gonna come straight from those bananas. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of creamy almond butter into my blender. Because the bananas are super sweet, I like adding a nut butter like an almond or even a peanut butter just to balance out that sweetness. I love using cardamom in this ice cream because it's got this really nice piney, fruity undertone. Really delicious. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can totally sub cinnamon instead. Now to help everything come together, I'm just gonna add a little bit of almond milk. Here's the important thing. We're not trying to go for a smoothie here, right? So we're just gonna add a little bit of milk just to get the blender going. Time to blend. Time to scrape down the sides of the blender. I'd rather scrape down the size of the blender a million times to get that really creamy, thick, almost soft serve consistency ice cream rather than add too much almond milk and be left with a smoothie. Can we just take a moment for my blender, please? It literally does the absolute most for me. It's key when I'm creating all of my delicious dairy-free recipes. Okay, I think we made it. I could eat this now, and you could too, but I do want a little bit of an ice cream scoopable consistency, so that's why I'm transferring it to the freezer. Okay, ice cream is in my container safely. It's ready for the freezer for an hour or more. I know, I know, I'm sorry, but patience is key here. Let's do it. My ice cream is done. A little patience gets us a very long way. I am just gonna cut some strawberries to top my ice cream with, and then I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> no, I did not just sneak a strawberry. I have been waiting for a long time for my dessert, so it is time to scoop my ice cream. I'm very excited. <sighs> I just gasped <laughs> yet again. Oh, you thought I was a single scoop girl? Think again. Oh, you thought I was a double scoop girl? Think once more. Time to top with some of my strawberries, just for some color, just for some freshness. I would say this looks too pretty to eat, but I'm for sure gonna eat it. I will take a picture though. Okay, I'm ready to taste. It is crazy that you can make something this creamy with frozen bananas. It's crazy, it's wild. 
The bananas are so sweet and we've got that almond butter to balance it out and that cardamom brings all the flavors to life. The next time you're craving something super creamy and delicious but you can't have dairy, look, there's options for you. These are so easy to make. I made so many of my dairy-free recipes in my blender. Easy to whip up, just as decadent, just as creamy and delicious without the dairy. Hold me back. I am going in again. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? What would you like to see from the federal government to keep Buffalo safe? If there is legislation brought to you to ban contraception, would you sign it? What should be focused on that could reduce inflation and avoid a recession? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. This is seriously so good. It's like the sweetness is perfect. It's not too much. It's not too little. It's like my little Goldilocks sweetness. Mm. It's so good. Mm. Who doesn't love a muffin? As for me, whenever I enter any bakery or cafe, my eyes go directly to the muffins. I am obsessed. Am I the hashtag muffin woman? I don't know, that's a question for another day. But I've always wanted to create my favorite bakery style muffins at home. So after a little testing, I came up with two that are always on rotation for me. First up, a blueberry muffin just sweetened with some honey and lemon poppy seed muffin tops with a cute lemon cashew glaze. I always bake with chocolate over fruit. That's typically my MO. But I will say, I always make a little exception when it comes to a blueberry muffin. They're just my favorite staple comfort baked good. But I was thinking, why should I go to a bakery when I can make one in my own kitchen? So let's get started. I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees and I've lined my little muffin tin with these cute muffin liners. They're so cute. Now I can start on my wet ingredients. First up, I've got one egg. Just cracked my egg in here. Gonna whisk it really well. I want no separation between the yolk and the whites. This looks nice and uniform. Now, I'm gonna add in my almond butter. I find that the almond butter kind of adds a really nice nuttiness to these muffins. It's so delicious. Gonna mix my egg and my almond butter together really nicely so it's well incorporated. And now, I'm gonna go ahead and add my melted and cooled coconut oil. This is gonna serve as a nice butter replacement. Okay, and now, I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract. And for my star, I cannot have my honey blueberry muffins without the honey, that would simply be wrong. I like to use local honey for these muffins especially because it's such an important flavor component. I really wanna use the good stuff. 
And finally, I want a little touch of acidity just to bring out all of those flavors, so I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh lemon juice. Perfect. Mix the lemon juice in there, it smells so good. Okay, my wet ingredients look perfect. They're well incorporated, they're well mixed, which means it's time for me to move on to my dry ingredients. I'm using almond flour for this recipe, which is honestly my favorite flour to bake with. It's super cakey and dense, so it creates a really nice texture in these muffins. I'm gonna add some baking powder and a little pinch of salt, just a little, perfect. Now I'm just gonna whisk my dry ingredients together, make sure everything's well incorporated. You know what time it is. <laughs> it's time to combine our wet and dry ingredients. We want an even, even muffin batter. It smells so good already. All right, I'm just gonna add a little bit of almond milk to help everything come together a bit better. This is looking great. Now, this is a blueberry muffin. So I've got my gorgeous fresh blueberries here. Just proceed with caution when you're folding your blueberries into the batter. We don't want them to burst. They're precious, they're delicate. Just like, be careful of their feelings, okay? Okay, we look nice and well incorporated here, so it's time for me to add them into my muffin tin. I like using a cookie scoop for cookies, for muffins, because it allows me to just capture even amounts of batter per muffin tin, per cookie, makes it really consistent. And then you get a nice even bake too. Perfect. All right, so all that's left to do is bake them. They're going in the oven 30 to 35 minutes. I'm really excited to see them on the other end of this. Um, should I open a bakery? Just wondering. They look so cute. I have let them cool for 15 minutes, which means that it's definitely time for me to eat them. Okay, let's take a look. I mean, come on. They look so good. Before I dive into these, okay, I'm gonna have to take a picture. I'm trying to start my own bakery. I gotta have some documentation of this moment. Pretty iconic stuff, I have to say. I think it's time for me to try them. I think I've waited long enough. Here's a question. Do you bite into your muffin or do you rip a piece off? I'm gonna be dainty today and rip a little piece off. Here I go. Okay, oh, almost lost a blueberry. Hmm. It's crazy how well the blueberries and the honey go together. Mmm. It's so good. Speaking of muffins, if you only eat the muffin tops, don't worry, I'm not judging you. In fact, my next recipe is for you because I'm gonna be making my lemon poppy seed muffin tops. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients. From Brooklyn, we're next to the subway station. The state's reservoirs are alarmingly low. War will pass them by. The midterms are here. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about for the primary or general election, and you'll instantly get voting rules, see the next big deadline, and learn how to take action for your plan. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for 2022. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. These are families trying to board those trains to Poland. I also want to get home. You'll get home. 
every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You and I both know that we are kind of only here for the muffin tops. Or at least that's my favorite part of the muffin. So for my next recipe, I thought I would whip up a lemon poppy seed muffin top with a lemon cashew glaze to satisfy all of you muffin top lovers out there. And I know you're out there. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees and because I love being prepared, I have lined my pan with parchment paper and now I get to work on my wet ingredients. All right, I'm gonna crack two eggs. Now I'm gonna add in my melted and cooled coconut oil. All right, whisking that nicely. I'm using maple syrup and coconut sugar to sweeten these muffin tops. They're my two favorite sweeteners. They add a really nice, robust taste, especially when paired together. Adding my maple syrup. Reminds me of pancakes and waffles, but it's kind of better in a muffin. This is a lemon poppy seed muffin top, which means we can't make it without the lemons, right? First, I'm gonna zest some lemons. I love using the lemon zest. It really amplifies that lemon flavor in these muffin tops. Now, I'm gonna juice my lemons. Because I love precision, <laughs> I'm gonna juice my lemons straight into this measuring cup so I know exactly how much I'm using. Okay, we've got our lemon juice, and now we're just gonna add it straight into the rest of our wet ingredients. Mix that up really nicely. And for one more layer of our sweetness, I'm gonna add some coconut sugar. Super warm, it's rich, it's golden. All right, our dry ingredients, very important. Just as important as our wet ingredients. Here, I'm using a combination of almond flour and oat flour. I find that almond flour is pretty dense. The only ingredient is almonds. And with oats, it's a little bit lighter. I'm gonna add some baking powder, a little pinch of salt to bring out all of that sweetness. Just a little. I'm gonna whisk this together. Just for a little something extra, I'm gonna add in some rolled oats. I find that this gives a lot of texture. It's really nice to have in these muffin tops. And because I'm really trying to recreate that iconic lemon poppy seed muffin, we have to have our poppy seeds. Okay, this looks really nice. It's time to combine our wet and dry ingredients. And add this in, perfect. Just gonna fold everything in super gently. Okay. This looks perfect. Time to use my giant cookie scoop and scoop these onto my pan. I like using these because it allows me to get a really nice uniform muffin top. So they're all even, they're all the same size. You know what's really great about a muffin top? You don't need a muffin tin to make them. Just use your cookie sheet. It's a game changer. These are ready for a little journey in the oven, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or until it's nice and golden brown around the edges. Let's go. I've let my muffins cool for about 20 minutes and you know what they need. You know what they're ready for? A little glaze. I'm gonna just preface this for you. I just wanna tell you that this glaze is kind of like a cross between a glaze and a frosting. So I do tend to call it a glosting. And I know I made that word up and I'm honestly pretty proud of myself for it. So let's make our glosting. To make this really creamy, delicious glaze slash frosting, AKA glosting, we are going to be using some cashews. I've soaked these cashews and when you soak them, it actually allows them to absorb that liquid and become really nice and tender and plump. This is gonna be the perfect thing to just blitz up in our blender because it's gonna be really luscious and smooth. I drained the water from my soaked cashews and I'm just gonna pop them in my blender. To complement that gorgeous lemon flavor in our lemon poppy seed muffin tops, I'm going to add some lemon juice into my blender, into my glossing. Now, to sweeten this up, I'm gonna add some maple syrup. Time for a little oat milk. Finally, to bring out all of those flavors, balance everything out, a little pinch of salt. Now I'm just gonna blend this up. Look at this gorgeous glossing. All right, we're ready to put this glaze on. Let me give you some options because we love options. You can do a little drizzle like this. It's so pretty. It's so thick and creamy. 
do a little delicate, unfussy drizzle, or if you want to really commit, you can just gloss that whole thing. Don't be shy. Getting it to really fall over the sides like that, it's really good. One last thing to really finish it off, seal the deal, a little extra poppy seed garnish. Those poppy seeds add some nice nuttiness. Gotta take a picture. I mean, <laughs> that frosting, it like, who gave the frosting permission to do that right there? It's almost unfair. Now it's my time to eat. My turn to eat. Pretty, right? Okay. I'm ready. You know what's the worst thing in a lemon baked good? Not enough lemon. This is so tart, perfectly sweet. I have no rules for myself. <laughs> mm. 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 I don't know, I feel like I found a new calling in life and I think it might be to open a muffin store. We'll have plenty of muffin tops, plenty of regular muffins. I hope this inspired you to make muffins at home. I mean, this is so easy to make. The frosting slash glossing, also very easy. I just hope you never go without a muffin again in your own home. Hmm. Good morning, impassioned plea. For God's sake, do something. President Biden addressing the nation, saying mass shootings have turned cities into killing fields and demanding lawmakers take action. How many more innocent American lives must be taken before we say enough, enough? This morning.